All right, today we got a special interview, special guest star, Chance Garden of the uh, Interverse podcast. Hey, Chance. What up, y'all? How's it going? Hey, what's up, man? I was beginning to worry that somebody took you out. Hey, were you <laughs> seeing my messages? No, actually, I didn't see any messages. Oh, okay, because I was tripping out. The last one I got was about a bathroom break. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, that was was over Instagram. Yeah, Yeah. this are bad, though. We were troubleshooting some audio shit. That's all right. I've been there. But uh, So what are your guys' names? Like, introduce me to you. I'm not too familiar with y'all. So I'm Nico. And uh, I'm Clark. And basically... Nico Clark. Cool. Hell yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, too, man. Um, yeah, dude, we, we've known each other like forever and we kind of just started doing our thing and, and riffing about the conspiracies and, and putting out podcasts. So we're, we're really stoked to have you on and, you know, kind of have another person to riff with. Yeah, I actually noticed that you tend to go over certain topics like for an episode. And so I, I picked out a few things that might be fun to get into that I hadn't seen on your archive Awesome. What are you thinking about? I have two ways we can go, or maybe they can, we can do both. But I, there's a, the war on imagination, which is a little bit more abstract. I don't have so many notes on that. But also the cosmic egg or orb theory of sort of uh, – have you heard of this one? No. No, I have not. But I, oh, I, I have some stuff on the war wild. on imagination for sure. But l- 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 let us know what the war, the cosmic egg is. Okay, well, cosmic egg is sort of a like a flat earth theory, but that takes it to a whole new level with esoteric or occult knowledge being woven in to actually describe a lot more than just that it's a you know a pizza with edges that you fall off of. It's not like that. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's a syn- It's called syn- syncretism, which is the it's where you find the synchronicity between mythologies and legends and scientific systems from all time and places oh. that you can and pull all the threads together and make a model out of that. I love it. Kind of okay. like Zeitgeist, the original one did for religions. Like they kind of pulled that thread through <laughs> yeah. ancient religions and modern ones. Yeah, sort of. But unfortunately with that one, I feel like it left me with a taste in my mouth of like, uh, there's nothing worth investigating there. And then I found out a few years later, that's definitely not the case. There's a lot you can learn if you start looking at the scriptures with a different set of eyes and the uh, cultural drive towards atheistic materialism is also pretty dangerous for uh, humanity, in my opinion. It's a very limiting worldview on people, which changes everything. Now, that's a good twist because it is kind of uh, it's interesting when you see those patterns laid out for you, but it it is. I didn't think about it as in kind of a atheistic uh, wedge stone that they could use to get into your kind of mindset right there, <laughs> get you away from the spiritual, right, and into the material. <laughs> yeah, which is a lot easier to control. People think they're just meat robots than uh, accept programming. <laughs> oh yeah. Also, oh, also yeah. if we're just tiny specks in the giant infinite space, then. Like what, like what are we really, as opposed to spiritual beings that have like complexities that we could never imagine? It's like exactly. <laughs> the, the complexity of like infinite spirituality complexity. itself. Yeah, is, inner is, is insane. Yeah, inner infinite as opposed to a exterior infinite. <laughs> so I'm looking up a good rendering of the cosmic egg. I mean, it's symbolic, and I don't believe necessarily any one way of looking at. <laughs> anything so whenever we talk about it i won't it won't be like this is what i think definitely is going on it's more that i think it's a really really dank conspiracy theory <laughs> that's a perfect disclaimer we should put that on all of our videos because like we'll get into like black belt level conspiracies it may not be like what how we live our life based on but we'll definitely uh like to get into them (laughs) yeah it's all about having it's just all about your perspective and having an open mind obviously i'm not going to just believe some super out there stuff you know just because i think we might have lost oh no okay oh Oh, there i see there's that link okay cool yeah check the chat for that this is hakan hism he's a dude that's been on my show a few times uh click on the egg image to enlarge it once you get that link up and this is sort of a picture of it, and I'll explain what this 
what this is symbolically uh, trying to show us here. But this image blows my mind. The, the artist is from Turkey. And right when I was getting into this material, he just happened to, like I'd already talked to him on my show over a year prior, but he just happened to hit me up and start telling me all about this, like these DMT experiences where he <laughs> saw this from the outside, he got outside of it. And he sent me a tapestry of oh, this picture shit. as Look well. That. That's back there. I have a tapestry of it, but it just synchronistically, okay. he started sending me all this stuff about cosmic egg and he had just finished that piece right when I found out about it. So it's pretty wild. Is that the shape, like in in theory, of the eggs? Yeah, a lot of yeah, symbology but, going on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll I'll have good notes to go through it all. But essentially, it's these these three ring worlds are where we're at the the middle rings, and each one represents like a planet that you could go to, sort of. And ours is the second one from the middle and, and was, in each one there's a different sun and moon so we've got our sun and moon and ours and the one outside of us has got mars and venus as its sun and moon and then beyond that it's saturn and jupiter as the sun and moon of the last ring realm oh it's, i see that the, the image in the bottom left depicts that right uh, okay okay yeah no definitely because you have the three orbits right there and then so yeah. like a spiral transcendence kind of thing so are those physical or spiritual or both that's a good question. I, I just look at all this and I'll try to explain it as such as okay. symbolic, but also yeah. maybe also real. But at the very least, it's a great like map to occultism because it ties in all the correspondences between color, frequency, emotion, uh, shape, sound, all this stuff. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the science of spirituality and like even, you know, that stuff can go back to like the Kabbalah like Kabbalah level people oh, yeah. who spend their lives trying to find the mathematics interwoven into the universe. And yeah, you yeah. should check out this dude's website that I sent the link from his, he's off the chain, man. He does like Xeno linguistics where he pulls uh, symbols and languages out of psychedelic states. And he's got an entire other website where he's working on trying to decode the uh, DMT languages that people experience and compare it to known world related uh, languages and occult languages and oh, shit. wild. Damn. Yeah. That's pretty fucking yeah. sick, man. <laughs> I wish I wasn't yeah. so scared. DMT, like I've done tried salvia, which is like nothing. Apparently. Oh, it's way worse. Yeah. It's a dark <laughs> version, apparently. Which yeah. It's funny, but they sell it at liquor stores. So that was my mind state back in the, those days that's I, when i did it too yeah. i was like 16 <laughs> was, um, yes, it, must, yep. it must be okay right <laughs> just like bath salts they had there and all these yeah, other I, fell in, I fell into a portal to hell the one time i did it yeah <laughs> that can happen yeah <laughs> but it's, uh, it seems like a real frequency drop but back then i had no idea what anything was i was really just on a in, roller coaster in the ride. matrix yeah yeah <laughs> how old are you guys 30 30 cool i just turned 31 so oh, barely nice. ahead of you yeah nice. we're in the same uh cultural probably bubble <laughs> hence why we did stop at the same time yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you ever we're, get into dmt i've done it a good many times i never got into it like as in doing it regularly but at certain times and places it showed up and i was ready i was to, a, i was around it ticket so much and i wish i had tried it but i just for some reason it scared me <laughs> yeah that's like the only one i really haven't tried yeah well it's like any of them you don't want to go in if it's freaking you out you want to yeah. be super sure about it and then and other than that you don't need it it's a place you've been before and uh yeah it's uh, it's accessible in some ways without the substance too it's just the substance is a shortcut which can have a lot of problems attached yeah. to it shortcuts can Especially so we're not ready to be there yet like <laughs> if you don't need it to shatter your materialism and bring you into a <laughs> deeper understanding of the panpsychist or idealist philosophy like that everything is conscious and alive then you don't need to necessarily do it it's like a break glass in case of emergency like a catalyst mm -hmm. yeah yeah i feel like our, mine was more of like it wasn't really like a it was a bunch of little things that built up to breaking down the matrix, like a bunch of pieces. Like it wasn't one mushroom trip specifically, but that was definitely a small catalyst. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, yeah. And certain conversations, that. certain higher side chats that we've had, <laughs> like the. Well, I love THC, by the way. Yeah, I figured oh, you guys were fans. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've, yeah, I don't get into conspiracies on my show as often as I constantly research them personally. Yeah, it was. I really liked the one that you had with Matt, though. That was the. You guys got pretty into the conspiratorial weeds a little bit, which was good. I, I could. I've re listened to it twice, actually. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, he's the man. Yeah. He's awesome. I'm going to probably do something else with them soon to follow up on that. Hell yeah. Yeah, um, it's crazy the conspiracy game, dude. Like, just the, the how how much the world has changed, as well as information and where people are getting it from. It's like uh, I feel like it's the wild west right now. Are you? Dude, it totally is. Are you into Rune Soup for like the kind of esoteric stuff? I should listen to it. I love Gordon, but yeah. I've only listened to it a handful of times. My main weekly podcast loop is thc mysterious universe can't i can't get away from mysterious universe yeah, write amazing. that down mysterious universe yeah. oh really holy crap you're in for one that one's got a subscription you can sign up for and they put out like four and a half to five hours of podcast a week oh and all man, shit that's what they, i need a couple of australian guys that research fringe topics and they spend the whole work week researching it and then uh, they tell each other the stories of the books they read or the stuff that they were looking up. And so it's about, it's not a conspiracy podcast, but they obviously talk about stuff that is conspiratorially repressed, like, you know, Bigfoot and aliens and everything delicious they, they possibly could, but they do it for fun. So they, they aren't afraid to talk about stories that seem almost definitely not true. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you guys would love it. It's awesome. amazing. And Unslaved is the other one I listen to. It's a Michael Tessarian podcast, and they they go a lot deeper than the average conspiracy researcher, I would say. No yes. one's members only. You have to like their content is so volatile that they you can't even get it any form of it for free. They just don't even bother trying oh, to put wow. it on YouTube. That's wow. like Crow. I know Crow. His second hour is like cr completely different than his first hour, but. <laughs> he's got a similar kind of very deep yeah like, i mean I've the come, moon isn't real i've like, come across that with like even there's certain videos like uh there's some videos that have been released documentaries like surrounding 9 11 and they're they're paid only like you not no youtube there's no like rips or downloads you know you got to shell out cash to watch it cosmic egg actually does kind of account for what crow sees on the moon too so that's interesting Awesome. Yeah. I was watching that. I, dude, I spent like a solid two days diving into Crow's Moon stuff, man. And it was pretty fascinating. Yeah. The way it reverberates and how it ripples. Had, yeah. And um, it said it just appeared certain um, ancient civilizations described a pre moon Earth and stuff like that. Yep. That, that's definitely explained in the cosmic egg theory. So. <laughs> oh, the, let's get back into it. <laughs> yeah. Are, are we recording, by the way? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, tight, tight. Because I've already been talking about a lot of stuff, huh? Yeah. So. All right. Well, you guys want what do you guys want to start with? Um, the egg seems pretty good. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah. If you want to break down the knowledge you have and maybe we can riff on some parallels. Yeah, I think so. I'll just go through it and just feel free to jump in if there's any points that seem like pausing on and considering more deeply. Awesome. But so the cosmic egg phenomenon, just for everyone out there listening, I, the, my favorite image that represents this is Hakanism, which is H A K A N H I S I M dot net. It's his website. And just look in the Universal Transmissions artwork and find the one that looks like an egg. And this is his artistic rendering, but as I was kind of talking about at the very beginning, he witnessed this in an out-of-body type psychedelic visionary state where he saw some kind of structure like this. He also talked about running into like chthonic, uh, super god, evil, demiurge-like beings up there that... <laughs> oh. That we're trying to keep him from uh, like the knowledge of what he was witnessing. Do you think those might be related to like the machine, the elves, machine elves, or whatnot that people tend to describe? They uh, could. Possibly. That's hard to say, but essentially, I look at all this phenomenon probably the same way that this dude Hakan does, which is that the entire reality is 
one psyche and our individual perspective is just a train of thought in this infinite psyche. So the, the spirit that is within us or the spark of life that gives us our ability to be is also the same thing that animates everything around us, even if we're in an entirely different dimensional plane or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so his approach to these chthonic octopoids, squid monsters, titans, was to basically be like, look, I know that you're just a part of what I'm a part of, essentially, uh, you are me, so you have no power over me other than what I give you, and uh, you're going to tell me everything. <laughs> I don't know exactly. I may be getting the story wrong, but I talked to him on my show about this a little bit, and uh, in his in, in some personal correspondence back and forth. But he created this cosmic egg image from that experience, and there's other researchers that have got a lot of good information in pretty good packaged form about this. So I'm going to go through stuff that's out there. And this isn't my, like I was telling them earlier, it's not my belief system, but I think this is actually a more parsimonious way of looking at the reality that I observe. I'm not a flat earther. I'm not a globe earther. Although this concept actually kind of blends the two because it's a sphere, but the part of the realm that we're in is a flat ring land. I like this theory a lot, though. It's one of the dankest. <laughs> so, so to, to, found. to clarify for people listening, uh, what size are we talking here? Like, is this cosmic egg uni- universe size, Earth sized? In terms, good of- question. Good question. Uh, and that's kind of maybe even further into the theoretical. But this is like our entire universe okay. as far as what we're in. But it's also like a womb for the gestation of whatever the being is that we're all one and a part of. Oh, I see. No, I see that. I see. It's literally an egg. So there very well could be, if you look at the top of this picture, there's like a dude shooting out the top of the egg <laughs> at the singularity point. Yeah. And it could, it's, it's thought by some researchers that that's basically like a way out and there are other egg universes or maybe even entirely other configurations of energy uh, that would represent oh. true alien worlds in a sense and okay. but that's almost like parallel universes or other galaxies maybe it, it's hard to know i mean especially hard to know even what's actually uh, in deep space thanks to how it seems that nasa lies about everything they've oh, ever yeah. said yeah you hear, yeah <laughs> that's for sure and yeah. they're started by nazis <laughs> but right um, so oh, I'm, that brings up a good point, but continue. Um, so it's kind of reminds me of the Archonic idea, but with the, the Archonic idea of um, like the Archons, but it's, they're trapping us here on this plane and they don't want us to ascend to the next plane. So one of the ideas was when you give birth or whatever, or when you die and you see the light, that's them tricking you into reincarnation. And they'll be you'll be trapped eternally in that loop as opposed mm-hmm. to being able to break through and ascend to the next plane. I wonder if that well, has any parallels with this or just kind of a apples a oranges. Good question. I mean, th- like I was saying, homeboy ran into actual <laughs> se- beings. Se- like yeah. beings up there that didn't seem very nice. Maybe <laughs> that has to do with like the concept the archons. of the archons. The archons could be some sort of higher dimensional entity that's trying to crack open the egg and eat it in a sense like eat, suck the energy out the way a snake would i mean that's why maybe that's why they're kind of associated with serpents too snakes eat eggs sometimes wow. but, you just hit the nail on the head i'm mean, just a real quick one um if you google universal egg the fourth image um is a serpent wrapped around an egg right <laughs> and then yeah before, and that's, uh, in norse mythology that's a big concept too the world the world tree and the serpent um I can't remember what they called Yggdrasil is the name of the world tree, but they had a serpent too, that was like wrapped around the entire thing. Potentially, man, I love mythology. It's like old school conspiracy almost. (laughs) (laughs) Well, actually this idea of a tree or an egg definitely fits into basically all the mythologies and the egg itself, the shell, if you will, is maybe more of like an electromagnetic container or a toroidal field system. And so, so let me just get, let me maybe get into my actual notes so that I can tell this in a relatively yeah, good kinda, order. The shell would be kind of like the firmament in the Bible, right? Is yeah, that- there's multiple shells throughout it as well. But exactly, you nailed it. Awesome. 
So there would be like a firmament around the a dome like firmament, but it's maybe not glass or something so much as some sort of electromagnetic force field. And there's more explanation of that as we go forward. But I do want to touch on the Gnosticism thing and say I personally don't jive with the jive or vibe with the (laughs) the Gnostic worldview because I think it's kind of a toxic and limiting worldview to believe that the world that we're in is some way unnatural or that we're prisoners here. You can you are what you think. So that's like not such a constructive opinion to have. And right, right. it's really not the natural world that seems so fallen as much as it's the human culture that is in the world and corrupting it. So, wow, that's a really good perspective. It's like another box you can get trapped inside of as opposed to, like seeing the world. Yeah, well, I, I, I personally, me personally, I feel like nature kind of created something beyond itself when it gave us this. I don't know what do you what do you want to call it intellect? You know, our higher intelligence, and some people took advantage of that. Um, like the Garden of Eden story, right there. <laughs> no, I, no, I, I guess necessarily, I wouldn't kind say of. nature created something beyond itself, but something unseen before. And I think it's our job to like come come back to the roots, you know. So I, you know, I, I do agree with you. Yeah, I think that another good way of looking at it is the concept of the yugas, which is definitely woven into this egg theory. And that the when we, when you said nature made something, you know, really special when we were created, I think that that's true. In that, in all occultism, there's a concept that man is the measure of the universe. That the human body in some way symbolically represents the entire universe that we're in. And when you look at what NASA presents to us as the universe, that doesn't really seem to fit other than it maybe could be articulated to look like a giant brain. I've seen those images, which is pretty cool. But yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. The, the cool. egg here that we're looking at, I hope people have looked this image up because it is so it's a badass uh, image. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it's it. insane. We're yeah. Make this the uh, the picture for the the uh, podcast and we'll put links down <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Hakan will probably really dig this conversation too. But this this uh, image or this representation of the universe mirrors the human chakra system, body, and energy field really completely. If you look in esoteric books about the aura, it's actually an egg shape around the human being. So Right, right. Got there's them. this really important part of the structure right through the middle. There's this column of energy or that could actually be like the, the pillar that is considered the world tree. And that's supposed to be right at the exact center. And then every compass points north. It's actually pointing at that. So <laughs> to sort of start from more the beginning in this cosmology, we have the original division of energy or consciousness into but before any time began this is sort of what kicks off time and kicks off the creation and this is reflected in like egyptian mythology and even christian mythology it's everywhere but the uh, first divisions are birth life and death or brahma vishnu and shiva which would uh, be akin to heaven earth and hell Mm -hmm. or positive neutral negative proton neutron electron angel human demon basically all the holy trinities are symbolic of the foundational structure to the universe uh, body mind and spirit is another one although they, right. might, they might not be in the right order i think spirit would be above body would be below and mind would be in the middle if i had to guess but i'm not entirely sure about that and but th- that's I mean, three is a super important number in mathematics and the universal geometry and shit like that um when you get into triangles and, and what's it called in the Christian religion, the triad or it's not the triad, the tr- Trinity. Well, yeah, that's what he was just talking <laughs> yeah. about. The Holy Trinity. Yeah. Yeah. Fa- Father, son, Holy spirit. I think that's pretty interesting. They took the divine mother out and replaced her with a puff of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a big joke, but uh, so I prefer just like fa- mother, father, son is a good way of looking at it. It's but, for- uh, the very top of this system We'll start from the top and kind of work down because it's it's worked into these three realms. It could be like the heavens, the the physical realm of the earths or the the planes, the planets, 
plane T is how you would say is another way of saying planet. So there's a plane yeah. with a cross, and that's what this image is showing the cross. So even in the word planet, it it's not really etymologically saying uh, a ball at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Talking about a plane, the but English the uh, the language very- was constructed, so like it wasn't a naturally. So all these words like plane, it was made for a reason and there's so much esoteric drippings in the words that we use like uh oh, for sure even for yeah. tv it's called programming for a reason and there's so many I, examples <laughs> my next podcast episode that's going to be coming out in a day or two is actually about word magic so oh yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. We were, yeah, yeah. i'm gonna watch that twice definitely yeah. too yep <laughs> <laughs> but that's actually funny that we're getting into this i meant to bring it up maybe at the beginning but in that conversation, I realized like the etymological or the symbolic deeper meanings of the phrase conspiracy researcher. So conspiracy or conspire actually means con is with and uh, spire is part of like the root word for breathing or spirit, respirate. So it's either saying with spirit or with breath. Huh. So if you a researcher, that's a pretty obvious one. Researcher means you're looking again. You're looking again with the spirit or looking again with your breath. And in any of the traditions that we have, ancient and new, that give us any kind of actual body, mind, spirit connection, it's always through the, the control point of the breath. That's how you modulate everything. That's the, the very beginning oscillation, the very original sine wave that the universe began pulsing and humming in before it actually split into that holy trinity that we started off talking about is that the breath is actually that exact same original wave so wow. that's why it's at the foundation of what we are as living beings and if you actually are only if you pay attention to only the breath that's the quickest way to get yourself into balance because it's putting you right back at like as close as you can be to the root core of who and what you are so this is get reminding me of a lot of eastern practices like meditation and yoga because yoga is like 90 percent breath work and then even in the yoga practice especially if you have a more a traditional teacher who actually studied maybe in india they'll be they talk about the golden egg and then you always have to imagine a golden egg within your chest when you breathe in and you breathe out so you're doing breath work while imagining an egg which i thought this is kind of random but it all is starting to tie in like you're um, mm-hmm. connecting a lot of dots for me today here yeah yeah <laughs> cool cool the that i really like what you're saying there and then whenever we talk more about the war on imagination uh, remind me to go back to that point about like the power of visualization because uh, there's there's a lot there and even some interesting research to back it back it up. But uh, I guess to get more into the structure of this cosmic egg, we have a lot of oh, notes. Yeah. Maybe I don't have to go through all of it. But <laughs> no, I love I love the, yeah. like, anything with you know where we're at, like, you know, whether it's our realm or the shape of the universe, like, you know, all of this stuff is super intriguing. It is. And just having an alternative way of looking at it, aside from a ball, that's a speck of nothing flying through an infinite sea of nothing. (laughs) I like this perspective better, even if the other one's true. (laughs) Yeah, There's a lot more significance to to this cosmic egg or world tree than to the idea that's been pushed on us all since we were kids, which is that literally we're meaningless and we, there's no creator or creative intelligence or any force in the universe that in any way makes us matter or that we could be connected to, you know, like that's the, I feel like that's the ultimate kill shot is to destroy someone's worldview to the point where everything is completely meaningless. And they've themselves have lost the realization that meet that they bring meaning and significance to everything that they do just by being what they are. And that's yeah. what our link to the creator or the creative force or the, uh, <laughs> the imagination itself, like, to preview a little bit about this war on imagination talk before I get there. Yeah. <laughs> imagination itself is source. And that's like the crux of what I might speak on if we get there. But so the top, the top third of this cosmic egg is the heavenly realms. And at the top, very top, the very northernmost point in the center of the column is the pole star Polaris, 
which is supposed to be the father of fathers. It's like the singularity. It's the reason all the compasses point to that direction. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's like the, it's like a white hole that everything's shooting out of perhaps. And maybe at the bottom, the very bottom on the other end of this column is the hell realm, so to speak. But it's, not so much hell like what the Christian conception of it is. It's just denser, lower frequency material. It's the base. It's the foundation. And uh, the very bottom of that is supposed to be Pluto, which would be the, I guess, like the the black hole at the other side that cre- creates, a, connects the two ends of this battery, so to speak, which is the, the central column that powers and energizes and causes all the rotation and the oscillation of everything within it just the same way that our spine is the control rod for everything in our body. All the nervous system and all the movements that we make have to be communicated from the top, from our brain, down through the spine to make anything actually happen. So there's another parallel to the body. It seems like kind of like an idea, like the idea is fractal, like a fractal, like it's the same within as yeah. without. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of fractal and there's layers of it. Like here. it yeah, keeps that. every layer you pull of the onion. It's it's the same structure. Like whether it be your body or the plane that we live on, or maybe the next plane. <laughs> Which is why this makes so much more sense than a dead rock of uh, floating through an empty void. Yeah, I love the word scientism uh, as a religion because when you look at it as a religion, it sounds just as goofy as a lot of our standard religion concepts. <laughs> like where right. you read about like Jesus yeah. living in a whale or whatever. Well, I mean, <laughs> you, what you were saying about like destroying somebody's worldview like that, it definitely leads, leads to a uh, a good workforce that doesn't talk about oh, yeah. <laughs> people, who, people <laughs> yeah. who wake up and clock in at nine and then clock. Well, there's out nothing, five. there's nothing to do other than try to get a better house or something. I yeah. don't know. Right. Yeah, like exactly. That. Exactly. That's it's all brutal, where man. materialism comes from. Yeah. And it's the, it definitely kills your spirit to believe you don't have one. <laughs> yeah. It represses it. Obviously, it can't be killed. It's infinite and eternal, but it can uh, it can play hide and seek with you if, if that's what you're asking it to do. Well, it's, it's crazy what medicine it is to just go on a hike or go camping with your friends, like especially if you're out of cell phone reach and maybe bring some shrooms. Or, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, because out there, when you're not around artificial stuff, you're experiencing a bunch of different representations of this fractal. And that's a uh, healing to you because you're the reason that actually causes DNA damage repair, which there's all kinds of like there's forest bathing that's being popular yeah. in Japan right now. There's lots of uh, actually mainstream research demonstrating that like it grounding. literally straight up heals you to be in nature. And yeah, grounding, I'm standing on a grounding mat right now, <laughs> actually nice. it's plugged into my wall outlet. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> being around those fractals shows your body a template of wholeness and your unconscious mind being in that template of wholeness will try to resonate with that, with the frequencies that are, you know, harmonious to wholeness. Whereas being around all these dissonant frequency fields, the, the EMF smog and just the kind of weird 90 degree angle, straight line, rectangle building structures yes. that we have everywhere. Yeah. Nature doesn't build stuff in those designs so it's uh, right away kind of a dissonant thing a clashing thing well even a solar panel they designed them as squares right and so to get access to the sun you either have to put them in a weird formation and tilt them and they just they're like recently like oh well if we just put them in the same shape as tree leaves they're going to get optimal sun and they're going to be <laughs> able to cool and it's like the perfect design it's like well obvi- obviously yeah. and then in japan when they designed the sewer route or the the subways they used a mold so they made a 3d cutout of the city and then they let put mold cultures there and which way they grew was the most efficient way so instead of like going out there and making millions of calculations they let nature show them where they should build their subway that's pretty sick that's far out man japanese are amazing yeah so like nature man like it's it's always a step ahead of us like there's nothing that we can smell with our digital smells that are a dog can't do better like at the airport or something like that right so. right yeah all our for all our technology each and everything we create is an imitation sometimes yes, a cheap one a cheap imitation nature already does that's very true 
Uh, yeah, you true. can even say a plagiarization. Yeah. Especially the <laughs> communication technology we have now, it, it seems to me a lot a lot more uh, harmonious if humans were to just develop their yeah. extrasensory forms of communication instead of using all this. But, you know, this entire cosmic egg thing is referring to a clock, a cosmic clock, a bigger way of measuring time. And I think to go back to the question of like the archonic forces and the new world order situation that yeah. we're watching accelerate. We just got slapped in the face with the <laughs> Yeah. The, uh, well, it was basically them saying, you guys have been talking about the new world order coming, but didn't you notice it's already here? All we had to do was pull the rug and everyone's going to go crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The structure was there. The, the bars are here. Now they just revealed, they pulled the veil back. Yeah. <laughs> now we can see but it. But the veil was coming back on its own. I yeah. Think. And that's something that a lot of the cosmic egg theorists. I mean, you should never put a date on your. Yeah, this is a special time, right? Spiritually. It's supposed to be, yeah. It's supposed to be a big harmonic convergence alignment year. And I'll kind of get into that after I go through the structure of the thing. But essentially, this cosmic clock is supposed to be ticking over from the uh, the bad yuga, which I think is the Iron Age, onto I think maybe the Bronze Age or something like that. Does that have which, to do with like the star constellations, uh, like Aquarius moving over to? I forget what yeah. it is. The water bearer was Jesus or whatever is moving to this Isis new to Aquarius. Yeah. Okay. That's and part so- of it, but it's also uh, uh, supposed to be a larger epochal shift potentially and maybe not right now but soon uh maybe this year but that the uh 24 000 year epoch cycle of going through that entire procession process you just described a full time a full lap it we're supposed to be maybe even though it doesn't line up with the way that we say it, count one through 12 you know if it was up to us we might say that the epoch is over when you go from uh, Pisces or from from Aries to Pisces because that's 1 to 12 which oh, by the okay. way those are my two signs I happen to be right on the cusp of those two Okay. but you know for all we know those numbers were attributed to the signs in that way to throw us off from the fact that we're right about to be on an epochal shift right here yeah <laughs> Just adjust it a little bit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've been. Some people are saying, like, I've been reading about Nibiru, and like, oh, uh-huh, it's coming back. Uh, it's coming back, or it's already, it's already within an orbit, and they're trying to hide it. With using the oh, I can't wait. I can't wait means. to get to this part. Because <laughs> it's in. That's in this. I mean, that's why it's that's incredible. Sick. It's like I love this. It's We're connecting so many dots. <laughs> everything. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so back up to Polaris, we're talking about the top third, the heavenly realm. Underneath that are the Andromeda and Milky Way galaxies, and they're like spinning disks of stars. They're luminaries that you could maybe consider them to be angels. You, <laughs> there's a barrier of water between us and that. And I've heard this that's a bunch of times. From why you, you know you've probably seen the videos of stars like flickering and wobbling and they look like they are a bright light on the wall of a pool and you're looking oh at them God. through the water that's totally what it looks like that's pretty crazy <laughs> exactly what it looks like <laughs> and it doesn't look like a flashlight thing. from a far distance at all like it's just completely no, it looks like yeah. It's coming, no yeah like it's the, like it's coming the starry the shape the starry kind of shape is is a water shape <laughs> and think about the lunar wave that ripple Oh my God! Oh, Damn. that's from Crow too. Crow loves the lunar wave, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Crow. Crow's got the videos on that. And look, look up lunar wave, people. I need that's to get into that. Specific. I need to get deeper. Crow triple seven. Yeah, he's great. Black belt level, but great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's intense. But uh, underneath or in the spiraling or spinning circles of constellations that are up there, uh, those might be like actual angelic beings the the lights in the sky possibly uh, i mean everything in the at least in the in my opinion correct way of looking at the universe everything is consciousness or everything that's energy is consciousness so especially light so whatever those things up there maybe they that's how they have some sort of influence on us is because they have a form of consciousness and they're observing and just like any other quantum observer effect that observation and intention makes some sort of impact on the collect larger collective reality doesn't no one of them or no one constellation rules at all but they have like you know an equal share of the the pool of manifestation power so to speak and also up there is supposed to be uranus and neptune yeah and see those on the uh, on the left and right 
kind of near, kind yeah. of near the top. Yeah, so they're supposed to be up there maybe as a sun and moon for those realms, but those realms are pretty much entirely spiritual, etheric. Okay. And uh, maybe it's theorized that there might be like a plane up there that is a hybrid of part somewhat material, somewhat spiritual, and there's supposed to be a race the Polarians are supposed to be up there and they're supposed to be like the original humanoids or they might even be what's called the Anunnaki because they're supposed to have had a part in the creating of the sort of subhuman species that are down in the The gold miners. (laughs) (laughs) That's one way I I don't really, I love Sitchin's work. It's fun, but I don't know if I am sure on those interpretations because I never went and, you know, interpreted it myself and translated it. Well, the par- it's interesting because you see parallels even in um, like science fiction, like film, like the Prome- oh, like yeah. Prometheus. They find the cave paint, you know, the cave drawings, and they they're they're certain that there's a, what do they call them, architects or engineers, yes. another race that developed us, and it's just it's the same concept as in Stargate, where they they were seeded basically by a advanced alien race yeah to yeah. mine this material. Right, <laughs> it was right. basically the story of the Anunnaki, like translated into a Hollywood movie, which is happens all the time. It's crazy how it seems like this esoteric knowledge is like everyone in certain circles knows it because they, yeah, like Hollywood is dripping in it. There's gotta be some secret club. We're all not a part of that. Like, where they just teach you, te- they te- teach like, you this shit from preschool. Yeah, like, like okay. Egg, yeah. They're teaching the you Anunnaki. about Anunnaki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There probably are lots of different versions of this, uh, secret societies and, orders and family bloodlines i've met a few people that claim to have had this kind of information passed to them through their family so imagine and like, each one has sort of its own cultural flavor the advantage good or, for good or bad the right. advantage of knowing it because without it you it's so much easier just to kind of fall in line and take orders and whatnot so you're kind of a cog as opposed to being an individual where it seems like a lot more of these people interact knowing that they're like that <laughs> yeah and, and so like almost npcs like the purpose of what we're even doing in here at least in um, the syncretic view is that we're sort of stepped down from the source energy above and brought into lower and lower realms of incarnation and frequency uh, yeah and more dense frequency until we make it to this world we're in right now i don't know how long that process might take but the idea is that that's where you get the, the concept of fallen angels which is that where you start oh the, the top and you descend down down and it's just part of your natural your journey to uh, understand yourself and you go descend as far down as you need to maybe not all the way to the bottom but for some people maybe all the way to the bottom and then go back up and then that's like your shooting star. So I think most humans on the planet are probably what you call shooting stars right now on the ascension path, but there very well could be humans that are part of the control hierarchy that are actually fallen angels and they're on their way down. And, and that's kind of bring, why bring them people yeah. down with them. Yeah. Now that answered Something a like great that. question for me. Cause I thought it was like when they mentioned this period of change, it was going to be kind of like a report card for the whole human race. And that would decide whether we ascend or descend, but it seems like it's more of an individual path, which makes more sense because it has to be. Yeah. Yeah. We're not just cogs. We are exactly extremely special. <laughs> Yeah, you can't be held responsible for the behavior of the rest of the race. And actually, it's that much more of a lesson if you decide to do the right thing because you know it's the right thing rather than because it's what everyone says you have to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like deep morality. But you can, yeah. bring, you can bring people up with you depending on your actions potentially, right? Or Yeah, yeah. And I, I think maybe... It's probably up to each soul how fast they go up and down the ladder. Maybe some of us already have been able to travel up and down the ladder at will, so to speak, and we're just here for the the show at this particular time. <laughs> Do you think the goal is to escape, like with the Archonic or uh, what's it, Gnostic belief is? And I think there's a seven levels, right? They believe you have to ascend seven levels as opposed to three. Well, it might be that you go through all of these luminaries as 
types of worlds or experiences in and of itself. Uh, and so maybe the occult idea that on your reincarnation path, you have to face the guardian of the threshold for each of the planets oh, I that could be in some way connected or maybe not. I mean, it seems like maybe not the idea. The idea isn't to escape so much as to grow and evolve and learn to know yourself. And perhaps at a certain point you can graduate from being sort of on the, the rail of uh, the middle rail uh, ascending and descending it because, because you actually understand the way that your own personal frequency works and how to take responsibility for your own creation, your own link to imagination at all times. But let's so how, talk about the, the uh, ring worlds a little more because okay. I think this will blow your mind. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the, the middle realm is where we have the, the flat planes or the planets. Ours is the second one from the middle. The very, very middle one is what you would call Aria, or it's where the Aryan subhuman species oh, is. Oh, and they're the in the flat Earth. north. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're they're the um, like the North Pole is actually an ice barrier that goes around this smaller world essentially and that's why you have every planet or every nation on the planet that has a military has got a military pl uh, presence at the north pole and they're all cooperating for some reason go and figure they, they would be called extraterrestrials because they're on extra earth right exactly but actually <laughs> yeah. they're the inner yeah. earth yes yeah they're the inner ring but the rings further out from us you nailed it they're the extraterrestrials and that's why they're fucking called extraterrestrials so do you think the nazis going into the hollow earth is that like a uh, psyop kind of thing maybe to try and make it seem like a crazy conspiracy theory to get us away from more of the his like kind of to like ancient theories about the Aryans and the set. It's either, it's either that or it's or some sort true. of message that's coded for people who actually understand this to yes. be able to decode what they're actually saying. But I, love that. I don't know. I mean, at this point there's so many people voices talking about inner earth concepts and, you know, in this conceptualization, there is also like an under earth. So when we're looking at all this stuff going on with caves and with, you know, the hell your goblins and, that fun, that fun stuff. Right, right. Yeah. You know that that could be. There could be. There supposedly are gateways to the the rings that are below our You've system because the everything is as above, so below, and that means that the concentric rings that make the planets that would be on the upper half also have an equivalent land mass formation on the bottom half. Okay. And those are like the like the rings of hell, Dante's Inferno. Dante's style. Inferno. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. I wish there was a way to kind of preview these places, but I, it might just be beyond our comprehension. Yeah, and I think that It'd it might so not even be so much uh, complexity because the individuality is sort of a um, def definition of individuality. Uniqueness is the result of having light. Because without in the dark everything's the same, and in this also in the same like metaphorical way of looking at it, uh, Neo, for example, he's the one. He's the unique one who can break the matrix. But his opponent is Agent Smith, whose entire plan is to copy everybody into clones of himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'll tell so you, there's probably uh, not a lot of stuff going on in the below realms it might just be like sort of a soup of rock and matter and heat and density and like anger and sadness <laughs> I don't yeah know. it sounds like emotional chaos or or just like nothing like yeah like the rocks or hmm. but you know, i don't know could be where the grays come from because oh. they don't have any individuality they're yeah. like these ro robotic things they're like ants in a car. Well, and you always see them coming in and out of water. The they're the crap. ships. Yeah, we have them over here off of SoCal. Uh, I think the oceans are supposed to connect to the the lower realms because the lower realms don't have a sky. So it's like all ocean. The sky is ocean. It's upside down though. Okay. Huh. 
I know there's a lot of people uh, that I've been reading talking about how there's underground cloning facilities and the clones that they're producing are basically like these soulless creatures, like uh, uh, like programmed life forces. <laughs> well, I, th- I think the Zuckerberg stuff's like that. He's a robot, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, but like they're no, they're like these, you know. I, I've never seen one. I don't know if it's actually a cloning facility or what else is going on. Maybe there's some demonic shit, you know, cult shit. But that they're these basically like programmable, soulless kind of like husks. Well, I, I think that, that that actually connects into the transhumanism thing too. And yeah. now there's more and more of a push for the idea that like, and also there's a lot of like chemical and electronic sterility being forced upon the population. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if the goal was to create a version of humanity that couldn't reproduce without the test tube. Like children and then you're and circumventing f- the portal. You're destroying the sacred geometric harmony of the way that a birth is actually supposed to work. For all we know, a soul can't even incarnate properly into a body if it comes out of a test tube and not out of a womb. Well, so that's heavy the shit, way yeah. we do birth is so fucked up. Like you clamp the umbilical cord and cut it when it would naturally dry and you would finish oh, yeah. absorbing all that stuff. Like even I raise chickens here and if you do that to a chick it will die like it won't have any immunities it will be very fragile like if you just let it absorb the yolk it's like almost it's very tough like they're very when they're in their natural state they're very invincible but if you don't let it absorb it will need antibiotics it'll need like a bunch of stuff in its feed just to maybe survive that's There's great. a lot more than that that happens to human babies too. Yeah. But that's like Inject that's them. its own subject matter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's own podcast episode for sure. But brutal. Yeah, but the predictive programming on sterilization has been intense recently. Like if you've seen um, *Handmaiden's Tale*, and it's all about right. eventual sterility and how like fertility will be a commodity. And right. for and the rich, I believe that. <laughs> yeah, and that could also tie into this, like the hybridization program that has been going on with uh, the Elon the Musk gra- too, with the, the Grays. Maybe that whole thing was to try to come up with a way to incarnate into human shells, essentially, and not you right. know. They create these shells out of te- with test tube baby clones, or in the future, all human beings are test tube babies, and possibly i mean if it's possible if it's possible that humanity doesn't even incarnate their soul into a body correctly if it's a test tube then maybe that's how humanity gets replaced by the invaders we don't even know it happened all of a sudden it's just like the actual invasion of the body snatchers yeah of <laughs> the hollywood version like you've made them basically s- human shells without a firewall like it's easy for them to be well, if the greys and like if the greys are how they generally look when they're depicted, then they're they're obviously, you know, their species or their being or whatever is degrading like compared to us. So oh, yeah. imagine being able to transfer yourself into a healthy human and just be able to control. Well, I don't think it's, you know, energy they, out. their body could function here well without maybe technology because they're from the lower realm. So they're like designed to live there. You know, like a yeah. creature wouldn't be yeah. able to go in the light without oh, like right. millions of years of evolution and stuff. Like it would just die. So, but if they could just use us as a host, they could, you know, yeah, <laughs> walk yeah. freely, like like Blade. like like the Little Mermaid <laughs> getting her legs. You know <laughs> that freaking story. <laughs> I, don't Disney? I don't know though. At the end of the day, <laughs> right? Yeah, but that just made I don't me... know. But this is fun to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about the uh, inner world a little more, though. The inner Earth, not the under Earth. This the Aryan world. The the, uh, the center ring is basically the Garden of Eden. It is really close to that world tree central column, which the, makes it black. Have a lot the darker ring. The the very yeah the uh, the blue triangle the center. Yeah, oh. exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That's Mercury is what the symbol is there because in that that inner earth the sun and the moon is mercury it's androgynous there's only one luminary and so how the structure supposedly forms is that oh at the beginning of creation there was just the just one ring world at the middle port portion and that would have been the far external one that has saturn and jupiter as its sun and moon at that time the they were an androgynous single luminary and after a full epochal cycle of 24,000 years, there's a, 
a ripple sort of like a big wave of energy pulses in from the central column and pushes the ring or the uh, the plane out and adds a new ring, a new layer that comes out. So each one of these epochal cycles, there's a, the, the realm in the middle pushes out and a new one comes in. Like a tree and it's ring? Like, like a tree ring, exactly. Or like ripples in a pond. Okay, yeah, that's sick. Yeah, so that's ours was the Garden of Eden until the last time one of these epochal cycles occurred, which so, is when the sun and moon split. And now we have Apollo and Artemis, our sun and moon. And before, but that's where this idea of having a pre moon earth comes from. And also the Mercury androgynous uh, luminary that's in the current center plane is what they call Nibiru or the black sun or planet X oh, or the, yes. inner, the inner earth sun. Dude, you just tied it all together. Oh my God. You mentioned you were going to tie the moon in. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That makes right, sense. I'll, I'll get there a little further on, but there's uh, times in this cosmic calendar where the toroidal fields that create like create the barriers or the Van Allen radiation belts, you could call them between the planes that those become in harmonic resonance with each other and they're no longer like solid so much and at that point you might see if that happens you might see mercury as like a planet x or a nibiru thing and you also very likely would get big energetic fluctuations pulsing through the whole system because like the walls are down and that could be why there's like this concept of uh, planet X that comes around every 6,000 years or something and brings a lot of cataclysmic action with it because it could be like, you know, uh, all, all kinds of natural disasters could occur whenever the barriers between energy flow and the system come down temporarily but it's uh, also like, kind of like a thinking of an point. atlantis kind of event like in or like the floods in the bible like those yeah. kind of natural events so our realm in this conceptualization is supposedly atlantis we're the ring that we're on is called atlantis so we're all atlanteans really okay yeah. interesting yeah that's interesting to take on atlantis i've never heard this yeah. one the drowning of Atlantis was when the next ring came in and pushed us out. And that created the flooding and also like a, a extreme phenomenon of uh, mud flood, because whenever you have vibration, Oh in, yeah. In earth that's even slightly wet. It actually liquefies like sink sand or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of the civilization could have easily been covered at that point. And that's why you see so much that's totally underwater. So many, there's like tons of, Greek style oh, yeah. there's ruins that are underwater all over the place. Off the coast oh, yeah. of Spain yeah, too, yeah. there's a lot of things they thought might be Atlantis, like off the northern coast in the Basque area, but it might just be one of the ancient is all Atlantis apparently, so it's one of the ancient <laughs> Yeah, oh, dude, it's like that they're always gonna be looking for it. So, man. which direction, like, wouldn't it be better to have stayed on our old one if it was possible? Like, well, I, ours, I, the land that humanity or our version of humanity was on literally moved. pushed outward. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So something like that. So, like, so we didn't have a choice, but there might be a way to get back through into the middle uh, column. Possibly, who knows? It might be designed this way because that's the progression that the species needs to go through. To it almost seems like to learn the Garden of Eden was better, unless. Unless I guess they didn't have any knowledge well, and they just further, ran it's around. Well, closer to source, so it had to have been like more harmonious. Yeah, I think that each ring, as you get further out, it's probably harsher environment. And that's our trajectory. Like, and that's where we want to go. Is is that just like part of leveling up? You know, well, you, <laughs> or, you go to a harder <laughs> level in the video game whenever yeah. you get stronger. And you get stronger. Yeah, that's true. I guess the experiences from the other realms have helped us potentially break through. But that means we're doing it as a species, potentially, if it's if it's a physical changes as well, like a physical rising of a whole bunch of us at the same time. You know, well, there's also 
the idea well, that whenever these barriers come down that someone could maybe travel between them and that's sort of theorized yeah. about why SpaceX is talking about going to Mars oh. talking about going to the next ring out where Mars is actually the sun of that ring and now, is that that's, that's also where you get the uh, Admiral Byrd stories about finding the civilization past Antarctica that was like the uh the Iron Nation, or whatever you called it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, is that considered a shortcut to do that? To get there by, like, brute force? I don't think a spaceship. But... Dude, have you watched Watchmen? You know how, yeah. You know how the the series, not the movie? Have you seen the series yet? Oh, I didn't know there was a series. Oh, what? It's actually it's really good. It's ripping really good. with esoteric stuff, but one of the guys is stuck on a moon, and he's, like, trying to get back to Earth, and, he and like, he basically just pops through the ether. Like he has to, he has to find the right timing and he's been waiting for this all this time and he finally has the right time and the right stuff so he can break through the ether and he drops down from the moon back to earth where he was like banished before the somewhat like a fallen angel. Like it was cr- it's crazy. It's, yeah. It's sick. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like I would love for, when you get done watching, if you want to come back, we can do like an <laughs> analysis of it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. I'm watching Twin Peaks right now. That one's blowing my mind. I can't believe I'm only just now watching it. Twin Peaks. I'm doing Handmaid's still right now. It's, Definitely do Twin Peaks. It's fucking awesome. Of course, Black Mirror, though. You've done Black Mirror, right? No, I haven't. Oh, wanted to. my. I've seen a few parts of it. I kind of get the gist from the. The descriptions. It just didn't seem like I wanted to watch it. Dude. I mean, there, sure every episode is different. And yeah. Like, directed by a different person in a different plot. Some are better than others. Uh, the first season is amazing. The second season with Miley Cyrus and stuff is not so good, but just the concepts Ew. and stuff, pretty mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so the next ring, I'll go through this part a little faster, but the next ring out is Lemuria, which is where Mars and Venus are the sun and moon. And then the outermost ring is Hyperborea. Saturn and Jupiter are the sun and moon there. And then the whole structure in, entire, in its entirety is Gaia, or the Egyptians called it Geb. There's a bunch of names for it, though. And the part, like the plane that we're on, the physical realm part, is called the Earth because it's an anagram for heart. It's the green part of the frequency range. It's the middle. The way that green is in between, um, is in the middle between uh, blue and red the blue and red shift yeah. sides of the rainbow or the, the light spectrum. So earth is an anagram for heart. It's the very middle of the egg. It's like the stage where all the, all the action takes place. And the other sections of it are really just about like influencing what goes on in the, the middle part or keeping like, the middle part going like the, the way that our organs egg. are just designed to keep the, the heart alive sort of so is this so i mean it pulses right there's a frequency at which these things oh you know are is are changing right so it is kind of beating as a heart yeah that's a really good point and there's actually a whole bunch of different oscillations and frequencies that come together to create the entire picture so each of the It's really cool to see YouTube videos of this put into a model, a video model, and they're out there. Look up uh, Norb's world, N-O-R-B-Z world. That that guy has probably the coolest cosmic egg graphics. He did like 3D animations for all this and explains it way better than I'm doing right now in a much more concise way with visual aids. (laughs) And... But uh, the point is that all the different planets, their their oscillation patterns, or not planets, I guess their suns or luminaries in this model, they uh, their oscillation patterns form the different types of waveforms and frequencies that give us the different colors, emotions, shapes, uh, chakras organs all the the patterns that have occult correspondences between the entire micro and macrocosm are initially generated or the first representation of these patterns if you will like the the foundation of the fractal is in the frequency and oscillatory patterns of the luminaries just like the foundation of the whole thing itself at the very root of everything is the breath sine wave Okay. Okay. So would this make sense if it's the center of the egg, it's like the yolk and that's where everything is going on really and it's feeding exactly. it's feeding energy from the other layers. So that would be like the white part of the egg kind of feeding into the embryo. 
Yeah. That's a good way of looking at it. I mean, of course, it's all a metaphor. Yeah, so all a metaphor, not exactly, yeah. but um, reality is a metaphor. <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't know where the planets would play a role in the general yolk, but <laughs> an egg scenario. But so, so is there? Is it possible that they're Nibiru like, they're is like coming? the artists that are creating the the physical structure inside the yolk, like if the, you will, like the stem cells, kind of. Or I don't know, they, or, or the DNA. That's a good way. To put it. The it's DNA, like the DNA, because yeah, the, the pattern that they move in is what every other pattern emerges out of. Like and they're Venus, literally... for example, if you look at the for, the shape that Venus carves out in the sky over time, it makes the a uh, five pointed star. Huh. Okay. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So Ven- that's why Venus is associated with phi, which is a. Uh, Phi is the freak, not the frequency, the ratio that all living things kind of approximate the golden mean through. So there's the the golden mean ratio, which is like the perfect golden rectangle or Fibonacci. It's based on Fibonacci. And then there's the phi ratio, which is nature's version of that, where as uh, things grow the way that they sp- like split out and multiply is it happens in this ratio called phi and as it keeps going it gets closer and closer to being the exact same proportion or like decimal point number as the fibonacci or the golden mean ratio is but i see if not exactly so nature is like nature is trying is getting approximating perfection essentially and getting closer and closer but it's like a, a never it never completes it never actually gets all the way there Right, it's closer. Right. So the fraction gets infinitely smaller and smaller. So that's kind of like a way of looking at our our personal individual soul's trajectory through eternity. Is that we're always approaching perfection closer and closer, but the distance between us and full illumination sort of is is constantly shrinking, but never completely goes away. Which is a, a weird thing, a paradox. Yeah, there's a concept, a mathematical concept. I forget what it's called. When you're like exponentially getting closer to zero, but you'll never reach it. Yeah, it's yeah. That's like how, what a, cir- a, a circle is based off of it. that. <laughs> because a circle is just like a like the number of triangles it takes to make a circle is like infinite. So, <laughs> like it just make the 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 edges of it smoother. Mm-hmm. And one thing I, I'm not sure about is like this model seems to be saying that the earth is like a hundred thousand years old or less. And I don't know that. I don't know if that jives or not. Like, I don't know how to measure a rock and find out how fucking old it is. So yeah. <laughs> and now but, is, the, is the earth going to cycle? Like, is, is that, is it, is it going to ever revert or com- like a complete makeover, complete change? Like Mayan calendar? I don't know. I mean, will it just keep getting more and more rings or will it actually complete and will there be a hatching? That you bring up, you brought up the Mayan calendar right there. Uh, <laughs> this is an interesting thing. The biblical scriptures say that the return of Christ consciousness or the return of Christ will be after the seven years of tribulation. If we took, happen to take that as beginning at the end point of the Mayan calendar, then 12, 21, 20, 20 would be the eighth full year after that, which is like a completion number eight is. Oh, shit. And it was supposed to be according to the revelation heralded by trumpets or trumpets. And we have Trump pants in office, right? Oh my God. <laughs> Probably heard that one. Never. Maybe, actually maybe not. not yet. That is, am- that's great. <laughs> <laughs> but so the, the the cosmic egg people are saying that there's a cardinal shift coming or that there's an alignment of the suns and moons that uh, that happen only every 6,000 years that brings the electromagnetic torus field or barriers between the worlds into resonance with each other and allows possibly for crossing over. And well, if that's actually happening, it could look a little bit like, a solar event like there could be electromagnetic consequences for the planet if uh, <laughs> the researchers say the harmonic convergence is supposed to be seven days long between 1225 and 1231 i tend to agree with never put a date on your apocalypse because yeah. it doesn't it's not. <laughs> but if there was some kind of like walls coming down or the veils dropping literally the veils between the worlds dropping it, there could be like a blast of energy from like a flare. 
yeah, it could cause energy from the center column to flare out all the way to the edges of the egg and come back in. Like, do you think it might actually knock the energy grid out for the planet, and knock out electronics and technology? Our podcast or yeah, lives. <laughs> we're gonna have to start doing it on top of a milk box in the cul de sac. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are saying that the event will radiate our DNA and activate latent powers, but might have a negative impact on heavily toxic people, heavy metal poisoning, or they eat a lot of meat. So well, maybe that's, that's uh, interesting. interesting. Aluminum in the sky, dude. And just yeah. barium in the sky. Well, and then it gets seeped into yeah. a plant. So it's like, even if, and then our pl- sources of plant food have been so manipulated, just the same as our meat food. But it's just like, if you eat corn from America, well, you know what's interesting like, is I, I read about this guy. I think it's some tech dude. I can't. Don't quote me. But he got he gets hired basically as a consultant for ultra rich people who want to know like how to spend their money for after the event. And it's like become such a thing that this dude makes bank consulting for like apocalypse essentially world and oh, world and for ultra rich people. Once they Interesting. Come back, they're New Zealand bunkers. It's crazy what you see. What like I mean, there was a huge uh, before the coronavirus, the thousand something CEOs that bailed out. It's like, is this the time that we've been forecasting for such a long time? Like, it's a good question. In my town where I live, it's like a hundred thousand, maybe two hundred thousand college town not that huge yeah in the middle of missouri and they have a tunnel system under the city that no one knows how big it is but like they're like the denver ex- airport that's so what, crazy. like a secret tunnel system a like, secret tunnel system that has guarded entrances but it's oh shit. people have obs- people have observed them taking like supplies into there everything from office supplies to like food stores and some people try to sneak around and get into the underground tunnels around here but but no one's really been able to figure out what the hell it is. And there's all kinds of Whoa. like super mansions that are out in the countryside yeah. out of town. Super crazy mansions. Some of the biggest ones around. Estates. Or some oh, of the biggest man. ones ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's some dirt going on there, man. Well, it's crazy. Apparently within certain circles, they say like, oh, if you say um, I have a place in New Zealand, that's kind of code. <laughs> we're saying like, yo, we're, we're, we're basically going to be on the arc. Like, are you? Huh. Do you have a ticket to the Ark? Because huh. I have a ticket to the Ark, and it's like, uh, am I going to see you in New Zealand after this? <laughs> or it may not even be New Zealand. It may just be like, oh, do you have North Korea? You know what's going down, <laughs> right? This whole thing explains the deluges as well. The Noah's Ark story could have been one of these oh yeah sort of new rings dropping in type events. Oh, well, that's, that's paralleled a- across like dozens of different cultures like i think the kumia yeah. and a bunch of different cultures had the same story and i think the kumia said certain like ant people came from under the ground and brought them into the earth to protect them from the <laughs> deluge and when you look at how they lived that sounded like they lived in the inner earth like they were harmonious they had no war like i think it was like a matriarchy or something weird like they lived completely different than a lot of us more like uh, barbaric people <laughs> did. Yeah. And the tough stuff about that is you never know what's an op and what isn't when it comes yeah. to like, like I never knew occult how. information being revealed. It could be that they're t- like in any one of those instances, it could just be a way of trying to get across a certain worldview well, the, or the opinion about, you know, have you heard about the Smithsonian? Like there's like, apparently like the dinosaur bones might not be real. And, I've like, heard that. Would have yeah. Been awesome. their, <laughs> yeah. Their logo is the black sun. Oh my god! I didn't even know. I've never even seen oh, that. Oh shit! Logo, yeah, I, I did not know. Yeah. That. yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, the Smithsonian logo is the black sun. The sat is that is the black sun the same as Saturn worship? Is that what that is too, or is that different? I don't think it's the same as Saturn worship. It might have to do with the the Aryans oh, the, from the very the, inner ring. Oh, uh, the the black cube is Saturn worship. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So the circle, the black circle is a symbol for the inner earth or the Aryans? Potentially. 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 I mean, I'm not saying I know for sure. The great thing about symbols is the, and the worst thing about them is they all represent many things. Like like the swastika or whatever inverse is the peace sign. Yeah. (laughs) 
Well, the swastika is the peace sign, and then the Nazis just flipped it. But people just kept calling it the swastika anyways, because... Yeah, right. That's, that's how right. people do. <laughs> they reverse it to represent the uh, inversion of the flow of life that the swastika was supposed to represent. Oh, so it changes the uh, the direction. And I'm sure I'm sure the direction is based on the way that the luminaries move directionally. Procession originally. Their procession, yeah. So another interesting thing is. Uh, Wired magazines in 2012, predictive programming maybe, oh, said there's this. a one in eight chance of catastrophic solar and mega storms by 2020. Oh my god! And then We're... it. So if this kind of like event happened, this alignment harmonic convergence event, you know, it would be reported as some. It'd be claimed in some false flag type of way to oh, get yeah. the agenda across. Definitely. And, Never let uh, a good uh, crisis go to waste. Have you heard of the Carrington event in 1859? Is it the asteroid yeah. or whatever that came down? I'll just read this couple, like two paragraphs from history.com about the Carrington event. And you tell me what you think. Cause it, maybe this is an example of one of these type of alignments opening up the veils temporarily. But on the morning of September 1st, 1859, amateur astronomer Richard Carrington ascended into the private observatory attached to his country estate outside of London. After cranking open the dome shutter to reveal the clear blue sky, he pointed his brass telescope toward the sun and began to sketch a cluster of enormous dark spots that freckled its surface. Suddenly, Carrington spotted what he described as two patches of intensely bright and white light erupting from the sunspots. Five minutes later, the fireballs vanished, but within hours, their impact would be felt across the globe. Globe. That night, telegraph communications around the world began to fail. There were reports of sparks showering from telegraph machines, shocking operators and setting papers ablaze. All over the planet, colorful auroras illuminated the nighttime skies, glowing so brightly that birds began to chirp as laborers started their daily chores, believing the sun had begun rising. Some oh, thought the end of the world was at hand, but the uh, the story is that Carrington saw sunspots, and that's why it's called the Carrington event. But he's the only one who supposedly saw it, so that could be a cover story for all we know to something else going on. Predictive programming for us to like be desensitized to the when it does happen, or to make well to just say it was only solar activity that caused that oh, event. Oh, like it's explained by science, something not by spirit, something or like just like science explain it away, and yeah. then people forget it. About it. it would they like that is something that like all these a lot of these people on these prepper shows are like oh i'm prepping for the solar flare and the solar flare is something that i've been poisoned by because i'm like oh man if you have a newer car not even that new <laughs> if anything past like the 70s or 60s you're not even going to be able to start it after a solar flare it's like it might not be a solar flare that we're looking at though it could be yeah, it could be this other interpretation of the the but, barriers or the veils coming down. And are they going to have the same properties? Because that's that'd be a good cover story. They'd be like, oh, it's going to have all these properties of a solar. Honestly, flare. I kind of think it would because yeah. the, the technology we use right now, as great as it is that we can it's record fragile. this, <laughs> all of the components, or not all, but like most of the components of this computer came from raping the earth. Yeah, and maybe that's from true. even slave labor in a lot of cases. So if yeah, there was going to be some sort of energy from the source to sort of put things back on track to a harmonious frequency, it probably would take out all the fucking technology. Yeah, it just probably like, would. It would. Just be like, like the it, viruses erupt in factory farms. It's, it's it's a way to deal with overpopulation. It's like <laughs> certain things. Like yeah, this. deal with a problem. Yeah, I would. I mean, I would love to not have radio signals and Wi-Fi signals yeah. and 4G signals blasting through my brain all day. Yeah. That would be yeah, great. I would, that would be great. It's, I think I'd feel a lot better. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's weird because I've had this random like urge to get back to the earth for the past like year. So I've been like growing. I have tons of chickens. I had some ducks. I have quails. Like I have a huge garden. Like it's like a weird like uh, maybe it's my subconscious is like tapping into the to the to the the script kind of you know, yeah like, man yeah, yeah. that sounds good it's, all, it's almost gotta, like noah man i feel like noah i'm like i <laughs> i feel like something and it's subconscious it's not like i'm prepping but it's just something i like have a newfound passion for that's been like gone and gone crazy <laughs> scaled up like crazy <laughs> So another couple of interesting things to throw onto the pile in 2017, I think it was either October or November, but there was this phenomenon where the majority of the planet, the sky turned red for a day and most people didn't even notice it. Do you remember this? I don't. Wait, when was it? 
It was uh, either October or November in 2017. I can't remember. Was that during the fires here? I don't know. They claimed that it was a result of mainstream media claimed that a hurricane kicked desert dust into the sky that filtered the sunlight and made the sky, the entire sky red over most of the planet, which to me what sounds fuck? ridiculous. I don't, I don't buy that. That yeah. sounds like BS. That's crazy. Exactly. I've also seen a bunch of videos of the sun flickering like a strobe light. Uh, you, like hey, off on, off on. I saw some crazy shit the other day with my own eyeballs, which was blowing my mind. There's some clouds blocking the sun, and you can when you look at the clouds with the sun behind it, you can tell by how the, the light is shining through it, like where the sun is behind it. And I was as I'm driving by, there's a crack, like a crack in the fucking clouds, and I see the sun, but it's not like I can look at it. It was like. I was like, is that the moon? Like, what the fuck? There's no way that's the moon. It was just, like, dimmed. It was, like, dimmed. And it wasn't lined up with where the light was coming from. It was just fucking weird. Oh, weird. Just, so, yeah. Have you heard of the sun gazing? Like, do you think that has anything to, like... Because apparently you can build up your tolerance to look into the sun. I have wanted to talk about this stuff for a long time. Haven't had a lot of chance to, so I'm glad. Yeah, this is, uh, this is fascinating stuff. And I also wanted to get on to the... Uh, imagination stuff as well. Uh, oh yeah, the war. The war on imagination. Uh, eventually. Yeah, I mean that might even be good to do as its own episode for all I know. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Deep yeah. on this topic. Yeah. Happy bicycle day. Is it? Four nineteen today. Oh man, I saw a pretty cool bicycle protest in Berkeley where they uh, were raising the bicycles and blocked all the traffic and had some boom boxes attached to the side of them. What are they protesting? I guess people driving their cars in Berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> it seemed yeah. more fun than uh, protest, and they only did it for like five minutes. Well, good for them. They I also, guess. I think they also lit gasoline on the street on fire, which was really counterproductive. It's like they went out and bought gasoline. And then lit it I feel like fire. <laughs> protesters are hard to trust because if you were really a responsible human, you would just go about doing things differently in your life instead of just screaming at daddy to fix it. Right. And it's kind of gives you like a bad taste in your mouth when someone kind of tells you to do something as opposed to just yeah, being a good role model and showing like why it's good to do it. <laughs> Exactly. Like this, especially with this Corona, with the masks and the gloves, they'll be like, "Oh, you shouldn't wear masks because uh, they don't help." And then two weeks later, they're like, "You have to wear masks to go out." It's like same person. I have a hard time not laughing when I see people in a mask. Yeah, you know, subconsciously, our our inner self has a lot of symbolic and interpretations of running into a stranger with a mask on and the main one is that they're a bandit or in some way yeah. dangerous so it just furthers this gap of uneasiness between person to person to be putting people in masks and they were already scared of getting sick off each other now they're scared of well it's crazy unconsciously more we have so much physical communication that humans do in between each other and some of these have to be learned as babies so if you have a baby that's stuck in a crib and you're not like doing faces with it and stuff it's not going to learn what a happy face is versus a sad face versus the million nuanced faces in between. So that's how you get people that have display signs of autism where they won't be able to see in social interactions if you're happy or sad. And they think that's like a chemical or like a genetic issue. And it's like, no, that's a nurture issue. Is they, they did, they've done tests where if you raise a baby without seeing any facial expressions, it won't be able to tell if you're happy or sad. It could it could call you like fat. That's so you, cruel too. Yeah, to raise definitely. a baby that way. Like, How can you do that? And then it, they can. It's not something you can learn after the age of eleven. Just like language, like with feral children, if if a child doesn't learn English by eleven, if you take them after eleven and try and teach them, they're just like a chimpanzee. They can learn about the same, but they can't string sentences together. So yeah, there's like a cutoff for really developing language skills, which is pretty crazy. I wonder if that has anything to do with spirituality. I know they like kids can like tap into like weird stuff like past lives and apparently so as i understand it the points of development each year represents one of the chakras and after the age of seven you, the uh, chakras all seal oh, oh they, wow. they seal each year oh. so that's why indoctrination 
is so powerful on children. That's why they're so sponge-like and absorb everything. And then the next 14 year cycle, I think it's somewhere in the middle between being open and closed, but some elements of it are kind of solidified and take a lot of work to root out or change. And especially I think the absorptive capacity of the mind and you know the throat chakra, you said it's the age of 11. That makes a, yes. a lot of sense because after 11 is uh, the 11th year would be a heart chakra year and the 12th year would be throat chakra. So if you make it all the way to your second, your last, uh, your second throat chakra year of development without being able to communicate or express yourself, probably going to be pretty messed up. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing how it can be like uh, described in both scientism and uh, on another perspective. <laughs> You yeah, know, actually, like, scientism took most of what they get right from the occult. Exactly. So. Otherwise, we wouldn't believe them. It's like, well, <laughs> it's like, oh, you got this right. And like your explanation, it doesn't matter what you explain. Like you can do math two different ways and get the same answer. You know, it's like certain sure, sure, sure. it's symbolic language. Yeah. And you're you pointing can, at the moon. You, there's like mathematical proofs where people can prove that two equals three and shit like that. Like, you know, that's like some, is that quantum or is no, that? It's uh, just like loopholes in mathematics and like repeating numbers and BS like that. But it's just like, it's just funny. Cause it's like, you can really do anything. Yeah. Like so you can, you can make scientism just fit anything. Yeah. They're yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, we, uh, so we've discovered complete it's randomness and they're like, yeah. Oh, uh, well we'll describe that with quantum theory. And it's like, what? Like, yeah. Randomness is, is before there was no such thing as randomness apparently when it comes to science and math and then like things like where a particle can instantly transmit, it'll have like a bound to another particle. And if you have them over a distance, um, they'll both and you aff affect one they'll both react in the same way Spooky and that action at a distance yes and that is faster than light travel if there is some type of communication which can only be explained in one of two ways either something spiritual or a simulation <laughs> yeah yeah which is unless there's another way that that's the only two ways that i can think of and that simulation theory is just a, a good another attempt box. at a Gnostic takeover, Gnostic style takeover of people's worldview uh, uh, to make it into something negative and limiting. And it's because super bleak. It could be yeah. a spiritual simulation in that sense. We call it a dream, and actually, that's very true. Oh, but wow. a dream is very different than something fake and uh, created to control you. A dream is you processing what you know about yourself and every the dream is everything god that's such a good perspective man yeah the spiritual <laughs> <laughs> i try to uh, i've tried a lot for a long time to find the perspectives about these things that are the least limiting most empowering without being only feeding or serving the ego but not to destroy the ego to actually bring it into alignment <laughs> with a higher level of will and about the uh to go back to cosmic egg a little bit I'll, I'll talk a bit about this whole polarian thing the the master race if you will the original human species the ones that are semi-ethereal semi-physical what i think about it is that the semi-physical part is actually us we are the polarians and we have another part of ourselves that is on the Ooh. highest plane close to source and we project down into this reality in a dreamlike or trance-like way Ooh. to have the experiences that and, and play the parts and put it all together to to build whatever it is that we're collectively in the process of creating and so that's where people kind of go when they die before reincarnation that could be could be that's, i think that's almost like the dark. polarians are supposed to be either translucent blue skinned or just fully like glowing blue skinned creatures and so that also ties into like the images of shiva and hindu gods oh a watchman yeah <laughs> dr oh, yeah. yeah yeah he's, a pol he's literally a polarian yeah, yeah that's a good point he's like a perfect like he just can analogy. create anything that he can think of you know it's all like his imagination is his uh, interface with the reality which means he's completely unclouded vision the doors of perception are clear as they can be isn't there's no like 
trying to figure out which is which for him he realizes that it's all at the thought the power of his imagination is the speed by which he can change and influence the world so that's a big lesson for all of us to take from Watchmen actually yeah and <laughs> you asked me about sun gazing so let me tell you the story oh, yes. about sun gazing <laughs> this was years ago but uh i had had a pretty interesting night at a small music and arts festival kind of like yoga festival okay. and i'd only been going to ev- alternative events like that for like a not even a full year probably and uh that night i did imbibe some i think mushrooms and some mdma at different points of the night but by the time this point of the story rolls around all that stuff was out of my system but i'd been up all night so there is sort of that uh liminal gateway that opens when you're sleep deprived and that was my first drug as a kid sleep (laughs) deprivation yeah playing video games dude and (laughs) yeah me too dog (laughs) south park got all funny all of a sudden like all these shows got funnier (laughs) so i was with this group uh a small group of people that had stayed up all night and we got together and uh went on a walk me and two other guys and the sun had come up and we were walking down this creek bed in the early morning and he stopped and wanted to do sun gazing because the sun was just barely over the horizon one of these two guys and we're like okay i never really tried it i just barely tangentially heard of it and so i watched him more than I sun gazed myself. Yeah. I sun gazed for just a few moments. And then I turned and watched this one guy, David, doing it. And me and the other guy that were watching him witnessed the same thing at the same time, which was that his skin started to turn blue. He was sun gazing what? for several minutes and like a minute and a half in, two minutes in, he started turning blue, like purplish indigo blue. Like, I'm not even kidding. His skin what? changed colors. Dude, and me and Evgeny, the other guy, looked at each other and were like, are you seeing him turn blue? We said it out loud while we were watching it from a distance. And then uh, after a while, he broke <laughs> contact off and his skin color started to like fade from blue to uh, orange and there was definitely like an aura you could see visibly around him. It wasn't the effect of like me looking at the sun and then there's the picture of the sun burn into my image yeah. or into my vision temporarily. Like it was, stuff. yeah, it was, it was something different. And me and this other guy saw it at the same time. And I never really had an interpretation for that until now. And now I think maybe by connecting to that really powerful energy source it was revealing the inner polarian or something like the his, the god self that each of the other half egos is an avatar for yeah his other half yeah he was getting some kind of harmonic resonance with it and we just watched it happen none of us knew what it meant not even the guy who it happened he didn't know he was turning blue <laughs> <laughs> you we know, had to tell him it's have you seen the dark crystal long time ago like oh, maybe twice there's a new series out too where it's like uh it's like a series instead of just a movie but it it has very similar stuff and the, the idea is like these skegsy evil lords had be are they evil because they were split and there's like two halves there's like a materialist half and there's like a spiritual half and they are fighting the wow. whole time while like wrecking the earth but they end up having the, like these little earthling human creatures like get them like defeat the Skeggsies enough or wound them so the spiritual half can get in and merge remerge with them and then once they wow. merge together they become like this crazy enlightened being and fix everything whereas the earth wow. was almost about to be destroyed because like they had imbalanced it so much that like it was just out of control like the natural like rhythms were all fucked up and damn yeah the dark crystal perfect Perfect example of even if it was intended whether or not it was intended something that came out of the imagination reflecting deep truths about the universe the deep conscious it's like i feel like the same passion that got me into like the randomly farming and stuff has speak maybe speaks to some of these guys who are into movies you know like some of these guys even say like oh i just came to me one day even writers of books like the harry potter lady who i think might be cia or something but. <laughs> <laughs> something yeah, yeah. Something up with that. i haven't looked into it deeply but when they, things don't go viral organically yeah right <laughs> that's very true <laughs> shit <Yeah. laughs> because viruses aren't contagious <laughs> what? yeah i've been getting into that recently i've been hearing that it viruses may not even be like a thing it may be toxicity of cells or something 
Well, if you just go based on the pattern that everything science thought was true, ended up not being true eventually and replaced by something else, then yeah. you can just go ahead and assume that they're not going to figure out what the ultimate nature of reality is through that particular left brain restricted, uh, right brain restricted, left brain only lens. Well, and this, this, this is like, it definitely ties into the war and imagination thing oh, hell yeah. we're talking about here. Well, there's a good paradox between what like they've been saying and I hope that with the control of the media it's still able to leak out there but there has been stories saying that people who have gotten the flu shot um, because they their antibodies weren't able to develop a wide spectrum they're only a narrow band to a certain part of the flu that they're more susceptible to this coronavirus so that's why you're seeing like some 105 year olds living because maybe they had never gotten a flu shot before in their life and these people who have gotten the flu shot are way more vulnerable. And then another article recently was saying, if you got the last two flu shots in a row, you're actually more likely to get this more recent one for some reason. And that's like on a mainstream article too. Hmm. But if you do try- and What if it has to do with the fact that they believe that they needed to get the shot to not be sick. So to them, there's a threat and they really believe oh, in it. Oh, wow. Acting, Subconscious. A magical ritual yes. that represents their belief in the danger of this infectious thing that they could just get at the- when, as soon as they find out that it's spreading, they wind up being the ones that have it. It's almost I like, think that there's a deep connection with the worldview that they have and what led them to even perform the ritual of the vaccination more than one time. What you just said has a proven, well, a theory, like a, it's an anecdotal story, but it's perfect parallel where this guy went to get a cancer screening and it said that he had like two months to live and that it was positive. And it's a one in like 100,000 chance that it's a false positive. And so he lived sure his life believing, <laughs> yeah, he lived his life believing that he had this form of cancer, right? And he died two months later and they got the second test back sometime after he had died and it showed that he was actually never had cancer and they did an autopsy, no wow. cancer. So he like, it was like a negative placebo. Gross. So like if you plant, that is, like, it's the called idea the is, the, that is yeah, the, real thing. the idea is the virus almost. It's so crazy. Have you heard of the dancing plague? No. Nah. Oh man, in the Middle Ages, there's a couple of spouts of this, the, the dancing plague, where everybody across the countryside, it would spread from town to town. Peasants would just go outside and dance till they dropped. Some of them would literally dance till they died. I've seen. And they couldn't it. control themselves. I've and seen like this is shows the exact same this. thing as what's going on with uh, epidemic viral spreads, unless it's connected to the frequency war. But even still, it can be a combination of things. It doesn't have to be one single explanation. There could be something that makes people feel off and then they take that to believe it as a reason why they're ill and of course the indoctrination and the fear mongering that makes them think that they could get ill add all those things together and you have at the very least a strong likelihood of the nocebo effect if there's something else going on on top of it uh so it's the perfect the perfect concoction mass like hysteria is one of the, the first things that. i learned about when i was a kid in the gifted program that the elementary school I went to put me in. And I was so glad that I ended up in that, uh, that compartmentaliza compartmentalization of the special kids thing. <laughs> you know, it's weird. What did they test you? Cause I ended up in that too, but for, they did the, the tests were all patterns. I don't even remember the test. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember it being. It was patterns. all patterns. And I was like, that's basically like conspiracy theorists, like pattern like, recognition. Yeah, pattern recognition. So, like, if you're really good at these very abstract, like, geometric pattern, um, they'll be like, what's the missing piece here? And that's how they would decide if you got to go into, like, higher uh, isolated classes away from, like, the masses, basically, where you had proper teachers, small ratios. <laughs> Like, and they teach you about stuff like mass hysteria. Yes, That's yeah, what yeah. I learned about that concept. I've oh, watched it play out all my life. It took me a long time to understand the the mechanic because you're throwing out a vibration, and if other like the fear vibration, you're resonating to it. So it's like that is literally like an epidemic or a plague. But you build you have you can have immunity from it if you are projecting the vibration of your choice or the frequency of your choice, the emotional state of balance that you do the practices you need to do to be in, 
that actually is like the immunity from the the negative frequency ep- epidemic, the fear epidemic. That almost because reminds me of those people are getting entrained into it because they aren't projecting outwards. They take basically they look at the world and they say, "All right, world, how do I feel right now?" What and it's based on what's yeah. happening to oh, them. Yeah. What's happening uh, around drones, them. man. Yeah. And then the other way around is the okay, world. This is how I feel. So it's self-expression versus self. Uh, repression essentially and that's the biggest i mean that's a big part of the war on imagination make people think that they have no self-expression and that's the first uh and hardest to pry out nail in the coffin that occurs at a very young age i think digital media is like the nail in the coffin as well because that way they're able to filter what we get before if you could get your hands on something paper there's no way they could technically filter it unless they got the book out of your hand but here if you click a link as you're clicking it they can give you two different sources depending on your zip code or they already do that they do that with newspapers so the same newspaper in one uh, state for two different zip codes put out two different headings so one heading it was for the exact same thing but one was like trump mishandles this so bad that blah 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 and then the other one was like trump is strong on his position with this and then you read the article; it's almost the same, but with slight changes to the verbiage. <laughs> but it has the same. They just test the temperature and be like, "All right, what flavor of the propaganda do these people like? Are they Coke people or Pepsi people?" <laughs> yeah, right. They're like split yeah. testing it like a like an ad agency would. It's well, like <laughs> I mean, the corporatization of like music and all of that it too has killed imagination as far yeah. as self expression. Oh yeah, top thirty media goes because it's it's all like made by either you know like a team of producers. You know, nobody yeah. makes nobody makes their own stuff anymore. Well, and YouTube used to be an outlet where you could get stuff out, and you but now it's completely filtered. Like to find anything, you have to find a direct link if it's not taken down yet. Like you're never gonna search yeah. it. <laughs> well, like, yeah, like, I know that I get repressed on YouTube. I yeah. have 550 subscribers, which has taken me three years to claw that out. But I put out a new video and. After a couple of days, it might be at three or five views if I never shared it outside right. of letting YouTube just suggest it to people. So huh. I don't know why. I would imagine some of those several hundred people would have subscribed because they intended to check out the next thing when they saw it come up. But it's crazy. You know, is YouTube doesn't want that to happen. I have a YouTube for my dogs where the highest viewed videos on there, which like we do some kind of cool stuff, like go to the beach stuff, but not the nothing that you'd expect high views on. But I have millions of views on my dogs eating. And it's like, how the hell is this? Like, and then like on anything that I've ever tried to do <laughs> substantive, like I can't get more than like 10, 20 views on it. Like, I, dude, it? I think there's like some uh, weird shit going on. Yeah. Like, and there's other people. For me, I noticed it after I talked about the pipeline thing. Oh yeah. That water pipeline thing in North Dakota. Then all of a sudden Facebook and YouTube were shoot me down, but I'm sure I would have come across it eventually anyway. Some, from, oh, that's did you talk about the symbology between, or the mythology about the black serpent? that they talked about I forgot which native people they spoke of how like a black serpent was going to come on the land and like no I didn't even know about that oh man like and it's a it's a black is like the is the oil filled pipeline is a black serpent mm. yeah, absolutely absolutely so, and oil is the lifeblood of the planet I've been yeah really, pharmaceuticals my guilty pleasure of video games has been uh, Final Fantasy 7 remake since that came Ooh, out I was working and, like, that. really blew <laughs> yeah. my mind with the symbolism in it that was it was super perfect when it came out in 96 or whenever but now it's even more relevant because the whole plot is revolving around an evil corporation that is also the government of this one mega city that is walled off from nature where they use these reactors to suck the life force energy out of the planet to power wow. their civilization. Yeah. The, and like, it's, yeah, it's right on the money. Yeah. That's what's technology happening. Technology versus the there's earth. Even is- like propaganda wars to make them believe other countries external to them are invading, but really it's just oh, like false flag operations. Militarized. <laughs> it's completely 1984, but with like anime style fighting and monsters. Oh my. It's pretty awesome. Have, have you seen, <laughs> have awesome. seen Princess Mononoke? I love that movie. Oh my it, God. That's genius. a great one. Very good. Like nature versus technology where like technology, just the fact of like mining the minerals to create the, te- the is just killing the earth. And they, and that the hero doesn't fight anyone. He never hurts anyone. Yeah. 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 Well, actually, that's not true. He uh, he does kind of actually his demon arm does now that I think about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he got he, he mixed. He had to like mix with the enemy to defeat it kind of. But he has to like control a, it. 
he has like a he's not violent and he he doesn't take a side he tries to get both sides to reconcile constantly if i remember correctly yeah kind of like pikachu and the freak well have you ever seen Tri- <laughs> trigun Trigon? Oh, that's one of my favorite animes of all no, time. Oh, dude. hell yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. fist bump you over the internet. This one yeah, of mine yeah. as well. Dude, anime <laughs> I can play dripping. it on guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, people look up Trigon. And then another cartoon that has a pacifist hero is uh, The Amazing Spider-Man in the 90s. That cartoon, the OG cartoon. Ooh, like the, the OG, Saturday like, morning one. cartoon? The Saturday morning 90s Spider-Man cartoon, if you go back and watch it, it's actually still pretty good. He never throws a punch at anybody. The worst he does is tackle somebody or web them up and restrain them. But he, like, solves every problem without trying to hurt anybody. And now that's not how Spider-Man is at all, but... Oh, no, yeah. (laughs) Right. It's supposed to be really... I mean, of course they did that because he was a cartoon. It's not exactly true to the comics, but I thought that was a very cool interpretation. Well, you know how they try and make it seem like human nature is so dark with all these movies and how easy it is to kill someone. Like, if you look at the statistics from World War Two, ninety something percent of people never shot at a person. Like, if they were going into battle, they would, War too. yeah, they'd purposely shoot up in the air just to like show that they were involved, but they right. didn't actually want to hit someone. That's how bad. Like, they knew bullets were coming at them, and that's why there's so many shots in War Two that just like. 99% of bullets don't hit anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, because it's not human nature to do any of those things. It's a second nature that has yeah. to be programmed into the human. But we've and gotten even those, still, it's hard to break them down to the point where they'll even do it. We've gotten those numbers up where there's a perfect Black Mirror episode about it where it's like they they make the people look like demons like in the, um, like there's like VR kind of, like AR, augmented reality. So what they're yeah. seeing looks like they're actually fighting like zombie demons but uh, they're just human rebels that don't want to like get vaccinated or like put into the yeah, fucked up yeah. city like they just want to live old freedom style well I mean you have like 1984 tells us that they're going to have us basically do the opposite of worship terrorists they're going to have us hate terrorists so much that we'll go out and kill them on behalf well of they the made government. like the people just wanting to live on a farm they're the terrorists so like and like they well, yeah, check it out too. That's, uh, <laughs> that's letting the, the world or the crowd tell you what something is rather than letting your inner self tell you what it is so yeah, like definitely. this augmented reality concept or the indoctrination that clouds your perceptual faculties and makes you believe something just because it's been programmed into you about another person yeah. that's that's the external that's look you know you're 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 reversing the flow that's supposed to be going on you're supposed to take information from the world perceptually but it's all supposed to go through the lens of imagination and intuition uh where you think what do i think about that you ask yourself the question that's what i mean by going through the lens of imagination that's the uh the the base level of it it's just asking yourself and listening for the answer Interesting. Being able to connect, like yeah. like being able to connect with yourself and yeah, I mean it's no different than some people end up going crazy and think they're talking to God because they figure out they have this power to ask questions and get answers. But mm. it's, uh, I mean, in a sense, it is talking to God, but it's talking to the spark of the all that's within everybody. The, the collective the, unconscious. Which sort of the, can be proven the collective out. Collective unconscious is almost like a different thing. It's almost like a, a field in and of itself. And I'm talking about something even Within. deeper. The thing that's before the before breath, even like the still center point. Uh, it's then it's actually nothingness and everything at the same time in a, in a sense. And like, and science. that's the source or imagination, pure imagination. William Blake, the poet, said. Imagination is the real and eternal world of which this vegetable universe is but a faint shadow. And that's another way of describing the fact that it's a dream reality that's being projected from uh, something else. But not that it's not real. It's experientially real. And we should, there's no reason not to treat it as such the way that you do in any other dream situation. Like, get the lesson out of it. Don't get hung up on any one part of it and try to keep going back into it. That makes hmm. a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 I like yeah, that. I think I like that. kind of touched on war on imagination a little bit. I didn't have a, a super specific outline other than I just wanted to talk about some of these things that we have managed to get to synchronistically and to get the point across, if I could, that imagination is the 
the base reality is the original reality like all forms of thinking and perception are forms of imagining whereas most people believe that imagination is just a, a way of thinking among many but that's completely incorrect all the entire reality is mental in a sense and that's uh, like a hermetic principle as well and that you could call it idealism in philosophical terms that the all is mind or everything is made of mind stuff. That's another way of describing panpsychism. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Which is just that everything's conscious, but what oh, we yeah, need to I keep like in that. mind, I think about panpsychism is that the consciousness isn't necessarily self-reflective or self-referential referential in everything. So be, although all like we can derive meaning from everything that we find in the world or un, infer significance about everything that's in the world because that significance already exists, i.e. the quality of your perception about something, like we can all point and go, okay, we agree that's red, we're calling that red, but we're seeing the same thing. So those qual there are qualitative properties to these objects of consciousness that are non-self-reflective that make them more static. And then there's the configurations of energy that give a mirroring effect to the consciousness where it can see itself sitting across from itself in a, in a weird way, which is like in another way of looking at it, if the ether or like the flow of universal chi or energy or orgone or life force, whatever you want to label it as, was akin to a flow of any other liquid, then whenever it would vortex this uh, this conscious energy would form a structure like uh, an upside down circular cone, the way of you know a vortex looks yeah. or a tornado. And at the very bottom of that vortex would be the point where your ego is actually at. So all what your brain does with the left and right brain is create a mirroring of thought in a sense, so that it can become self referential. Like you ask yourself, what do I think of that? Well. Who's the one asking and who is the I oh, that they're wow. asking about? There's two, there's a, a bicameral split or division, the primary division, the yin and the yang. And that like the duality is what actually generates the entire experience of reality, just the same way that we are powered by walking around on two legs. We we walk in duality, but we, th we see in unity, we see one picture, uh, even though we see through two eyes. So, there's that sort of, uh, that's what the caduceus or the DNA thing is as well. It's like that overlapping where it's like they come apart, come together, come apart, come together. But the <laughs> the vortex metaphor I, I really like because if this is like a conscious energetic material or um, energy that underlies everything, if it formed structures that were that complex, like the way our brain is actually like a bunch of knots and you know, if you look at it it's uh, very web like a that. web exactly and it's in a in a structure that does allow it to also talk to itself and be in two like two complete pairs so that's where we get self-aware consciousness is from that type of a structure and that would mean a lot of creatures besides humans actually had self-aware consciousness but it would mean that the consciousness that dictates that uh you know, a, a rock is a rock isn't in the same way, like having the experience of what it's like to be a rock. It's yeah. just the rock, if that makes sense. But I yeah, think that yeah. some of these experiences, I know, I know about a rock, but with plants, they're a lot more complex than we have ever thought. And some of them are been explained yeah. with scientism or whatever, but the, like the micro, um, I think it's the different fl flora or fungi will be used in between the root networks of say redwood trees. And they can uh, share resources between trees to help certain oh, areas yeah. out. Or they also bind their roots together because the redwood trees, their roots can't go deep enough to keep them from getting knocked over because of how much top heavy weight they have, obviously. And they can't just penetrate hundreds of feet down into bedrock. So they interweave their roots together and create like a network in between the whole forest. So it's okay. pretty amazing. Like how the way it's the only thing on the planet that's more, that's as complex as the human brain, as far as I know, then yeah, are the, the mycelium networks that you're yeah. talking about. They're uh, ancient. 
Yeah. I, I agree with you. There's de- definitely other species that are self-aware and have that but like, self-reflective weird, ability. You can put a... Oh, sorry. Man. No, you can. Um, I just um, continue this thing. Um, but let me let me ask you do, you, do you also believe that we can eventually create uh, machines that can have those qualitative experiences of the mind? That's a tough question because you might be able to imitate it if you figured out the right structure for manipulating the flow of energy. But what would be coming through it would not be the same as what was coming through a human being that had this organic connection. Because I would think that part of our energy body contains this link to the source or like a a portal in a way, which is maybe the tunnel that you blast through during different types of journeys and at the end of your life. It's a... it's like your ethernet cable. It's your, the silver cord it's called, but an artificially created being would not have that just as possibly an artificially grown in a test tube human, like we started out talking about might not have that, which means that the configuration of the energy in that would be, you could call it demonic because it's divided from it's divided from self or source. Uh, and that's what demonic actually means. Daimon divided man. And that's, you know, that's where, where we get schizophrenia, which is compartmentalized personalities or uh, discrete partitions of energy that are separated and walled off within the human psyche or even within the body. Like that's why a lot of demo- like so-called demonic possession cases involve certain parts of the body having an effect because uh, trauma in particular is stored in the body in our musculature circuitry if you will as actual stored energy and if that is it's generational you know, too exactly it can do, it can roll that way and if it's if we get to the point where we are so disconnected from that part of ourselves that it's a full-on barrier then i would say that that is in itself a form of artificial intelligence the the uh, voice that the person hears or the the recurring nightmares or the anti-synchronicity there's, that they consider themselves cursed. There's a lot of ways that they can end up experiencing that separation coming back to haunt them, that part of themselves that they're rejecting and repressing and not healing or allowing the energy to flow freely through because basically at the end of the day, they don't want to become aware of whatever that experience or event was again. They want to totally repress it, which is sort of a natural safety mechanism. But I think about the AI question that when Elon Musk says it's summoning the demon, that he's what he means by that is it's an imitation through electronics of the same mechanism that creates demonic the demiurge. host host attachment in humanity. Yeah. It's the stuck energy in a circuitory loop that has no connection back to the source, which is what makes it vampiric. It has to feed on other source connected energy, uh, energetic beings to c- persist and continue to exist. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's no possible. Sort of- like yeah, I have to have some sort of um, tunnel into your system, in a sense. Like it, it's really weird. I, I think there could be both, though. Well, I think what you're saying, like earlier, whereas like technology is all a knockoff of nature, like even to things you wouldn't think of. So like an Ethernet cable is similar to a mycelium network between the roots, and then for Wi-Fi, plants already they have that as well. So. Um, we may have had these things before which they have talked about like it's with telepathy and stuff like that and different ways to communicate with each other if you believe in like the Gnostics and Atlantis and stuff like that and higher states of consciousness where all these things that we use technology for we would be like that sucks compared to what we can use our mind for like they would say that you could levitate stuff teleport like if you read in like the Bhagavad Gita and like what the gods have these powers of like the fallen angels and whatnot like their powers make technology look whack and in ancient aliens they'd be like well it was technology <laughs> but it may have been <laughs> they're trying to they want to disconnect us from that power yeah that you power know, they don't right want us to have that so and it's just like all those movies like when they show like it's a war between people who are wanting to use technology as their like their tool or to empower them versus the people who are using like spiritual things and their advantages to certain things like weapons. <laughs> I think, yeah. I don't know how well we can fight spiritually against guns, just like in Princess Mononoke. <laughs> it's like, you have to, there yeah. is a way, but it's not, you're not going to be able to beat them like muscle for muscle, really, sometimes. Like, 
you gotta hit. Yeah, them. whenever you whenever you decide to like fight something, you're endowing it with the their energy, of, with your energy. Yeah, yeah. so that's why it, Smith and Neo are, have to come to a stalemate for balance to be restored. Uh, he, he has to hmm. stop fighting. That's a it's crazy. It's, true. Yeah, yeah. The it's like there's I could name like twenty or thirty movies right now that have that same like archetypal I forget what it's called but just the same plot basically like plot, yeah, yeah, yeah you could draw analogies to the, the same it's crazy <laughs> like, like the, the one like, breaking out or uh, well like that and just like the general like esoteric thoughts that we were talking about earlier oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I might have run out of things to riff on. I mean, not for permanently, but I, yeah. I had a thought in my head, and for the first time, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> no I was problem. on a roll, though. Yeah. Oh, you know what it was? It came back. I just saw the word on my notes, and it popped into my brain. Polarians, right? Yeah. That's also, I just wanted to make a link between that and the concept of the daimon, the the player of the game. If you're familiar with Anthony Peak and his uh, writings about consciousness and the science of consciousness, he it's, he takes the idea from the ancient Greeks of the daimon, which is sort of like the player that's controlling the avatar. And the daimon could definitely be a way of describing the Polarian self. And the telepathy could be just as simple, mechanically speaking, as you're playing a video game with a bunch of your friends in the room and you just lean over to your friend and tell them something and then all of a sudden they act their character acts as if they knew that the way that in a co-op video game you work together and communicate things to each other that the uh, the avatars on the screen are not saying to each other oh wow that's a good yeah that's a good way to put it use video games to explain spirituality versus <laughs> for simulation i'm <laughs> glad there was some use of me playing all those video games oh yeah <laughs> yeah dude dude i'm on modern warfare right now that thing's add are you in warzone warzone yeah modern warfare i don't even know yeah warzone <laughs> yeah i'm into strategy though for sure some starcraft i went on a big witcher bend Oh, really? I watched the series without playing the game, so I think I didn't do it justice. Yeah, the novels are where it's at. I recommend that to everybody. If you read the novels and then play the games, the games are like fan fiction that takes place after the novels, technically, because it's not written by the original author, but they flow together nicely. And the novels have some pretty awesome, awesome occult themes in them as well, including the idea of the uh, harmonic convergence of the spheres that allows for interdimensional or interplanetary travel. And I could do a whole thing on actually analyzing the the Witcher, the Witcher stuff. So it would have to include the game <laughs> if the game's really carried on correctly and take it to even further. But I got to find the right people who are familiar with the material and or just do a solo episode about it, maybe. But uh -huh. you know, I know someone who's it, they might not know what I'm talking about. So yeah, I've gone for it. It's like I know a few people who are familiar with the game, not so much the books. Yeah, yeah, uh, me neither, me neither. I'm not familiar. The really third either, game yeah. is the important one. The first two are alright, but the third one's the the one that really continues the story of the books anyway. So you okay. could kind of see Well, that. have you noticed a trend in games now where they're all uh, dystopian futures where you loot houses for weapons and go <laughs> kill each other? Like Fallout, <laughs> Fortnite, Fallout, Daisy, all these things like is all about <laughs> I wonder if that has Yeah, any... Fallout was bought by I mean, the original Fallout games are one thing, but they were bought by Bethesda, which is Bethesda, Maryland, like the heart of the intelligence community. Oh my God! They also really? made yeah, uh, they made they make Skyrim and the uh, Elder Scrolls games too, which are some of the most addictive yeah fantasy RPGs ever created. <laughs> Damn, it's like Ready Player One. They just want everyone to be home with their headset on and consuming and just... yeah, I think that's exactly what they want, man. <laughs> they want yeah. It's, all it's controlled. true. Yep, they want to orchestrate the whole dance, and that's not what dancing is. I mean, you can choreography is fine if the person agrees to it, or maybe had a hand in creating it. But to put everyone in lockstep, that's uh, it's a North Korean it's dance. It's boring. <laughs> <laughs> not into it. I don't think it's going to work. We'll see. I hope not. Yeah, yeah because that's the one thing. Might work for some people and not for others. That's one thing I forgot to mention is like, isn't there the potential for us to either fall or rise like in these, this next trying times or whatever? 
Yeah, I think it is an individual deal. And uh, that's always how it has. That's always how it's been. So like if all this cosmic egg stuff to maybe put a pin in it, I definitely on the side of like predicting certain things to happen in 2020. I put very little stock in, not because I don't think something crazy could happen. Some fucking crazy shit has already happened this year, yeah. but because uh, I don't want to taint what the destiny of this universe might be through, uh, it's like through my expectations or beliefs. I, I'm just going to trust that things are going to flow in the way that I need them to in my personal subjective reality tunnel and that it will happen the same way for everyone else that's ready to uh, balance and know themselves and continue the journey because it's not like even if some crazy veil shredding events happen it's not like there will be a, well that's the end I mean who's going to choose to not exist over existence yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to yeah, I yeah. think the ball's going to keep rolling one way or the other and Maybe things will get exponentially weirder. Seems like they have been over the last seven years. So to talk about that sort of biblical tribulation theory, you know, the whole written by Francis Bacon, King James Bible, riddled yeah. with astrological significance. <laughs> uh, uh, there is possibly something to that, uh, or maybe it was something architected from a from a more demiurge like place but i don't really like the demiurge as a concept i'd rather look at that as symbolic of humanity trapped in reason and divorced from intelligence yeah and probably give it like what blake does by delving into it too much you know like you're manifesting it if you live your reality in yeah that, you, you know? ma- <laughs> manifesting reality yeah like always put positivity in or at least yeah, yeah, for sure. You don't want to believe that you're a slave to a, an evil demiurge god. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's a good it's analogy. Really. A good analogy to keep in your mind in case you find yourself working at Seven Eleven or something, and <laughs> your tyrannical boss. <laughs> it's like maybe you might want to find an alternate source of income at that point. <laughs> but yeah. um, to, to close with a William Blake quote if the doors of perception were cleansed everything would appear to man as it is infinite that's the truth at the the core if we really can see things for what they are it's all expressions of the infinite in some way or another wow i like that yeah i like that i mean that is is that could could you relate that to the fractals and the cosmic egg or is that a stretch for me to say? Oh, that? The, the egg is no, that's middle? what it. That's literally what it means. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> it, it yeah, like it encompasses everything it. that you see is representative of the infinite. So it's all representative of the egg in some way or a component of it. The but fra- even like a fractal. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Fuck yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. Or a wave. I think right. Like a like a sine wave is infinite. Well, the sine wave is the the universal heartbeat or breath. Yeah, that does seem to just keep on going. I mean, you ever think about your heart? It never stopped beating this whole time yet. Isn't yeah. that weird? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that is a trip, yeah. Yeah. So we're powerful, man. And the it, another thing that's worth investigating in, in a future time is the fact that complete control over all the various autonomic modulations of the human body is actually possible for an individual to attain. The Buddhists do it all the time. Like they can sleep in snow because they can regulate their heartbeat and temperature to the point where they won't get frostbite. Symbolically that puts you very much in the Polarian perspective because you're the above. So that's like a definitely body that's why working with the body is actually the path to ascension. It's why the the evil religions vilify the body and try to repress it and make you think it's low or dirty. It's actually it's your control point to the entire egg well, in a way. Oh wow! Like I think the war on information is like one concise point. Is like when certain empires went around the world, like the eagle versus the snake empires, especially, and like these other. If you looked at them, like Japan, how they were so isolated, they were practicing a way more spiritual, and like they would be working on perfecting themselves, like a clean body, clean life kind of lifestyle. And we just came in there with a ship and we're like, yeah, open it up for trade yeah. <laughs> or, or we'll blast you. <laughs> Where's the money? Yeah, at? there's some theories that the 
global civilization that we see in ruins was only a few hundred years ago. Yeah. And that yeah. basically enough of humanity was wiped out and uh, just the children were kept that they could teach them whatever and implant any history in any part of the world you want. Well, if you believe and, on our current history, that's happened tons of times, like over and over and over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of bleak. Yeah, like when the Mongols. It is kind of bleak, but that's in, Iron Age shit. That's yeah. the, the 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 most diminished, lowest point of consciousness and light in the cycle, as it were. It's like the winter. It's cosmic winter. Yeah. And we're, so next would have to be a springtime, which is good. Yeah, life, a lot of new life, apparently. Hopefully, after the death of winter, though, there's a lot of death in winter, <laughs> or at least oh, dormancy. Yeah, at least dormancy. Yeah. Where I live, if I would drive like on a two or three hour drive down the highway across the state, when I was in college, just like eight years ago, whenever I got to where I was going, my windshield would be so pelted with bugs that yes. I'd have to clean it between every trip. And now I I haven't cleaned my windshield for bugs for years, man. Yeah, that has to do with a lot of things, pesticides, Wi-Fi's, but um, even the yeah, soils, yeah, like yeah. if you picked up a rock, underneath would be like 10 different types of like a couple earwigs, a worm, I like some days, spiders. Yeah. Now you pick up a rock and there's nothing underneath. It's just dirt. It's like, what is going on? But here in my personal backyard, it's not as bad. And I hear it has to do with grounding cables as well, because the way we, we run our electricity in the United States, instead of having all of it recycled back to the power plant, we run grounding cables into the earth, which mess with the uh, electric, the electricity, it basically pumps electricity into the soil and that messes with everything. Earthworms, because yeah, yeah. if you want to harvest earthworms, you put two prods in the soil and then you run a current through it and it makes them think they're drowning or something. So they'll all wiggle up to the surface. I'd like to think that once yeah. that if there was like an event that wiped out all of our current style of technology that we could band together and roll out the alternative energy research um, quickly. Yeah. Because it's interesting how things are coming to a head at the same time. There's so many fields that are seemingly really close to a breakthrough or breakthroughs have been repressed, but they can't repress all of it forever. And yeah, I mean, well, I think scary as it sounds for everything to just shut down and stop working. We're, we're already getting it in like a slow way with this coronavirus thing. So uh, maybe we can ease into it. <laughs> yeah, take a cool. hol holistic approach to electricity because it does, it creates magnetic fields and all these other things that we can't see, but totally Ooh. affect us. <laughs> like just oh, even having power that. lines above you affect your cell phone. Well, it also affects your circadian ribbon. Like the people who work on those things, they have a, one of the highest suicide rates. And that's like before we get into the newer, higher speed data transfer that we're having wirelessly now. It's crazy. Yeah. Like 5G. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, re remember to be uh, projecting your preferred state outward instead of uh, receiving it inward. And I think even to some degree, as long as you're. Like to do that, you have to be aware of what your inner state is. You can't be lying to yourself. So if we're feeling sick or unhealthy in some ways, or we're getting some signal about things we need to clean up or change, then those are the things that changing will give us the most protection from external uh, radiation of all the types, if you will. Yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't believe there'll be like something that just wipes out all the people that aren't ready all at once. It seems wasteful nature is usually not that wasteful but i guess we'll see yeah 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 we'll see man yeah there was an earthquake over here like not too long after the stay-at-home order was oh, issued man. i'd be worried that mess up our water lines <laughs> yeah oh. and uh and then there was like a bunch of little tiny aftershocks yeah because our inf water infrastructure is ancient it breaks even with tiny earthquakes so it's like <laughs> Big earthquake. Yeah. And it's funny because ever since we were little kids, every, every, all the adults have been going, there's going to be a giant earthquake. It's going to destroy yeah. everything in Southern California. Well, if it's part of the day. Quit saying that, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's not part of the next level of the egg, though, because I think, remember, he says, like, the transition has, like, a lot of... Cataclysm. Lot of, yeah, cataclysm. Seems I mean, like hopefully, it would have to if all the earth was getting pushed out. Yeah, yeah. physically. <laughs> I mean, hopefully not like too much. Hopefully, it's not a horror show. You know? Maybe this one will I'd, be. I'd less like it physical. to be. A, I'd like it to be as pleasant of a transition as possible. Yeah, and who knows if 
the timing that has been explained is correct. Like, what if it was something that secreted out year by year in gradual layers and just grew slowly, more like a tree? Because a tree doesn't just bam all of a sudden have a new ring inside of it and everything oh, pushes yeah. out. Mm. And they're different so sizes. Like, that's one of the ways that we should be questioning the interpretation here because the syncretism is awesome, but until you go and try to figure out the syncretism, you can't be fully sure of how someone else is interpreting things syncretically. You can, you can listen to a lot of what I was just talking about and go, well, that sounds, that sounds interesting. That sounds like it resonates. It sounds right. But you know, does it sound right for everything to cataclysmically uh, bust out like that? Or when a new ring drops, I don't know if that sounds right. Uh, that's a good question. Good point. Does it sound right that the planet's a hundred thousand years old? Uh, to me, that doesn't sound super right, but yeah. I, could, I could be programmed incorrectly. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I think that the thing's infinite. Maybe it sucks back in at a time, like a breathe in, breathe out. That would be pretty. Um, that would be pretty legit as far as being a fractal of the human. It's kind of like yeah. the Big Bang. They they believe like it's uh, it it ex- infinitely expands into a certain point and then retracts into an infinitely dense thing and then expands just like breathing. Yeah, uh, or like a heartbeat too. Like a heartbeat, yeah. But that's them just trying to steal the concept potentially. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The the wild thing about scientism is once you have an expla- explanation, everything the person looks at looks like that explanation. So yeah it's hard to talk about this type of stuff because people that are really into what is called science are like, but I've done all this research and I've had all this schooling and this can't all be wrong. And it just shuts down right there. And these are the people we need most to help us understand what is and isn't right about what like conspiracy researchers say about various aspects of science. We should, it would be nice if we could be having the conversation and each taking each other's points to heart instead of, you know, trying to figure out the the truth in the middle somewhere, because obviously not everything, every scientist observed everywhere could be wrong, but it is also true that it's pretty damn hard to replicate even some simple experiments and get the exact same results as the original person. It seems like there's a lot more chaos in the mix than science will ever want to admit oh yeah and organizations and nefarious people like maybe not even associated but funding certain things so it's <laughs> some yeah you get what you pay for when it comes to research yeah <laughs> yeah but i think everyone yeah. should be open to having their mind blown either like even if you just want to list like mytho- even if it's mythology or just something different like it's people should be open to it. And if they take offense to it, that's when you should really look at yourself and be like, what, why do I feel angry that they're saying this is potentially, they're not telling me I have to live my life like this is, but in me having a visceral response to it, then like there's, you got to check yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Del- del- deeper into why you're having that kind Cosmic of response. Dis- yeah, exactly. dissonance is a big deal. Yeah. yeah worries. But the problem is someone experiencing cognitive dissonance is the last person that wants to rip that bandaid off. Yeah, yeah, usually. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tricky. You got to in- inception them. You got to make them come to the idea like it's their own. Yeah. That's how it's done to us. We got to yeah. do the same thing as teachers <laughs> yeah. to other people. Drop them little little breadcrumbs. Help people try to. <laughs> you can't yeah. force feed them the, yeah. the loaf yet. <laughs> They'll be like, I'm cool and intolerant. Do you guys have any specific other questions or things to mention? I kind of have to go. Oh, no problem. Thanks for staying no, with yeah, us that, as long was, as you did. That yeah. was great, man. Yeah, that got pretty epic, actually. It turned out yeah. kind of long. Yeah. Um, when, uh, I'm glad we got to explore soon. these in depth, these topics. Yeah. Um, let us know your schedule. And maybe we can uh, schedule something up soon. We should have this edited up and posted in a few days. And are you planning on sw- uh, posting it as well, or just gonna? Have if, just- if you're cool, I'd like. I mean, if you want me to post it on my actual RSS feed, I totally would. But to keep it on yours, I could just post it to my uh, paywall feed and okay. tell people about it in the free show. I'd say either way, you're welcome to put it wherever. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't have open a, source it. Yeah, I don't really have a problem with to you your own uh, discretion. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I hope everyone is still with me after hearing me talk about this crazy cosmic egg shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you you oh, might wow. get a, a influx because this is the people are really hungry for this kind of stuff right now, especially with the quarantine going on. They're looking for. Uh, different alternate perspectives for sure <laughs> yeah and i'm just kidding you know i think 
we go some pretty far out places on Interverse. Cosmic Egg is not that weird. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm serious when I say I've wanted a good opportunity to talk about it. So I appreciate getting a platform where I could sort of collect my thoughts about it um, and pair them with what I've basically heard syncretists say about it. Because that's why I say I don't really know and it's just a dang conspiracy that I really yeah. like to entertain because I'm not the one that's read all the holy texts and scriptures and studied st- astrology and studied uh, uh, astronomy and measured where the planets were moving myself over hundreds of years. Like there's so much to it at the, at a point syncretism becomes useful because we can see where there's resonance between a bunch of stuff that we have already observed and that might be like a clue that we're on a more correct track maybe it's literally true the cosmic egg maybe it's symbolically true um in a higher dimensional way maybe both it's yeah or or maybe it's maybe we really are on a speck of worthless nothingness floating through an infinite void it could be thousands of miles per hour yeah (laughs) i mean i was kind of late i was in that boat for a while now i'm uh i have a couple boats that i float around in (laughs) yeah exactly you gotta put put yourself on a shelf and see through many sets of eyes yeah well did you honestly blew my mind and connected a lot of dots and made me kind of rethink a few things because uh like um simulation and stuff like that really it it connected a lot of these dots for me but it also the idea of that just putting you inside the box of simulation was interesting because this egg theory can encompass that and more so it's it's kind of my granddaddy theory right now i think for sure it's <laughs> definitely one of the fresh it is it's like the grand unifying theory yeah <laughs> i feel that i'm so i'm glad you brought them. this is a fire complete fire perfect topic yeah definitely yeah <laughs> Cool. I'll send you a couple links to good uh, resources on egg. The two that I like best are Norb's World, which I mentioned at the beginning. With the Z. He yeah. has the crazy graphics videos of it. Uh, and the other guy is a dude named Martin Kenny. And he's the first person I heard talking about this. The dude made like a paper mache model of this whole thing. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. He made this like really complex and that's how you know something has at least some meat to it in my opinion is that it inspires people creatively and they like that's them they're coming up with these models of it and they're just models just like any scientific model it's not an exact replica in any way but it uh it's coming through the imagination which is actually closer to truth than any of the other versions of perception it's It's just a matter of like where like what level is that true at in the fractal and yeah yeah when you tap into that it's crazy how much energy it could give you to produce something that you wouldn't think was potentially possible like when you get really interested like that guy with the paper mache probably didn't even notice like it was nothing to him because he had the energy like the background energy from these ideas it was feeding him yeah potentially like archon yeah. energy, <laughs> like a, po- a positive archon, like inverse archon. I say I, I uh, sent you through Skype the links to Norbs and to uh, Martin Kenny, and those awesome. are two of my favorite syncretism researchers. Another really good one is Santos Bonacci. He's a syncretist. I don't think he. I don't know how on the cosmic egg train he is, but in other ways, he can point out syncretism between different mythologies and uh, spiritual sciences really well. So uh, those are good places to go to look for that. Awesome. Hell yeah, man. Well, dude, thanks for coming on. Yeah. And uh, we want to. Well, we want to shout out your podcast, obviously, for the viewers oh, yeah. at home. And then what um, social medias and stuff would you like? So. Interversepodcast.com is where the show lives. You can find it on everything that podcasts would be played on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, all the podcast catching services like Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube. I kind of like the people that check it out on YouTube just because I make <laughs> kind of creative uh, artwork and backgrounds and like moving kaleidoscopes for the videos just because. I would get bored if I was putting out the same thing for the videos that even though it's an audio only show, but (laughs) Interverse is 
Universe is definitely about the uh, winning the war on the imagination for yourself. So I talk to creative people, conspiracy people, spiritual people. The really there's not a like a limit topically so it makes it hard to describe what it's about but at the end of the day i always try to bring in that perspective that that perspective itself is the primary lens that your reality holographically forms through so um recent episodes were past life hypnotic regression therapist that was a fun one did the uh galactic mayan calendar which totally lines up with cosmic egg and the cosmic yeah. clock you guys mentioned my covid 19 episode with matt landman a bunch of content this last couple months on qigong and body work from an eastern like Dao's perspective but yeah oh one of my favorite episodes i've done in a long time is probably this one with becca tarnas on the lord of the rings oh, saga and i love um, that series decoding or not decoding but like understanding the how Tolkien was basically describing the exact same inner earth. Concept, conceptualization of the imagination, and even a lot about this, uh, these, a lot about this far-reaching mythological history that we're, we're calling cosmic egg or syncretism. Tolkien definitely pulled from a lot of those sources too. Although, you know, what he thought is one thing, what he actually wrote and what you can interpret it to mean is another, because as he put it, it was essentially channeled. Like he wasn't creating it. He was witnessing it and find him to be a perfect example of how the imagination is actually a portal to something to many things real, but to the infinite itself. So anything it's a portal to anything. So that's kind of a, a, a the gist of Interverse. I've been doing it for a couple of years. You can find it all over the place, like I said. And thanks for having me on here. It's always fun to get to be the guest and talk a lot because uh, as the host, I try not to talk too much and I get to cut loose when I'm the guy being talked to. It's super fun and helps me th realize a deeper level to what it is I think about things. Every time you explain something or try to teach it, you always learn more about it yourself. It's just kind of part of the territory. So I appreciate the opportunity to do that. Awesome. Hell yeah, man. No problem. We appreciate you coming on. All right. Well, cool beans and I'll talk to you guys uh, soon, I hope. All right. Thanks, awesome. Chance.